Welcome back to the Metropol Grid. Hopefully you're doing well. It's the 2nd of March. That's 3.02.23. <laughs> Numbers. Hopefully you're doing well. It's been a week for, for Nemerner. A lot has changed, particularly if you're playing Standard. You're playing a new game than you were maybe even a week ago. It's really frustrating that Null Signal folks give like big drops on Fridays, like six hours after the stream ends. Maybe just do it a bit earlier. I appreciate your time. <laughs> How's everyone doing? Hopefully you're doing well. Hey, Ixerman. Hey, Ryan. I think the song is new. It's pretty good. Agreed sitting here with a drink and really digging the new song. I don't think that song is new. I'd actually be really surprised if there's any new songs in there. I have a bunch of new songs that I use because I try and find a bespoke song for every video intro for better or worse. Uh, and... I haven't integrated those into the environment because I forgot where I stored them on my hard drive. I just obviously can go find them. It shouldn't be hard. But um, yeah, we'll update that soon enough because there are some songs I don't want to hear again. I heard some of these songs for years and like, you know, when you get that new tune. OK, obviously, quality music aside. Um, I've heard some of these a lot. That's all I'm saying. Your streams are the time capsule of the six hours for time. <laughs> Fenders, how's it going? And for historical reasons, if you wanted to know what standard looked like, let me tell you about a week and six hours ago. I was the middle one. I never heard of it. Let me tell you the name of it. Um, but I promise you it's it's not new. It's probably either Elevation by Stanley Gervich or uh, Turn Up by Stoked. Both of them are actually classics on this channel. Hey, Orb, how's it going? Orb, can you help me out? I can't tell if it's on was on your podcast or if it was on the shadow net. Um, I did a bit of research, but I'm trying to to source a quote that I've been like quoting, which states that June has said that going forward in Netrunner, we're going to see no five threes or minimal five threes. And I'm pretty sure it was on a podcast. I think it was either the shadow net or. Um, or your podcast or maybe. Yeah, I don't know. Slums cast or shadow. I, I, I'm like, I don't know if I'm just gaslighting myself and everyone. And if so, apologies. But I'm pretty sure that's what I heard. And uh, I'm thinking about I'm going to make a video in the near future talking about five, three agendas, because I honestly think they're kind of a really, really big deal. Netrunner and I'm not liking them. I went digging for the quote and couldn't find it. Damn it. She didn't say that on slums five. Sure. OK, beans. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, you could have said I'm not sure. And then I have to listen to all the slums cast. So you kind of made a mistake there. Having a good week. I am, Xren. How's your week been? Yeah, I can't figure out what it is. I re listened to some. If so, apologies. Well, that makes gaslighting okay. Okay, perfect. River, how are you doing, by the way? Um, yeah, minimal five threes. It's kind of what I want. I want minimal five threes. I'm gonna make a video, like a short video coming up on it. I'm really tired of five three agendas. This doesn't make me correct, but I think five three agendas are behind most of the evils in Netrunner. Lucas, June was interviewed on Shadow, and her name is in the title of that episode. It should be. And I think she was twice on uh, this, uh, the Shadow Net. I listened to one of them today. She didn't say that, but she said some other really cool stuff, including if obviously the quote that in context here will be really important. If no cards get banned from Parhelion, did we really do a good job? And I'm not saying this to like dunk on anyone because I 100% agree with that quote. I think if something gets banned, it means that they were trying something new and something important and something exciting. And that's for the best. Not, we don't want six out of 10 sets. We want exciting sets. So, yeah, no, I'm, I'm not saying this to like rub it into anyone again. Fantastic. Really excited, stoked about it. I thought it was an article like the early Borealis te a teaser delay article. Y Yo, Jeff, how's it going? I picked it up and like I searched through like I didn't read the whole thing. Uh, I will sit down and do it, but I control F5. I control F agenda and I couldn't find anything. So maybe I'm just on the wrong article, but maybe you're right. 
Hey, DCM RIPH, how's it going? Hey, first time watching a stream, but really appreciate your bits as a new player. Yo, that's really nice to hear. Welcome to the game. Thanks for dropping in saying a message. I've been getting a fair few messages and comments and responses from people who are getting to the game this year or last year. We're like recent new players. And firstly, welcome. Um, glad you're enjoying this stuff. And I just want to iterate this every time if you can. If you're watching this live, if you're watching in a video, there's a lot of folks here that seem like we're old friends. And that's largely true. But there's also, like, it's just so important and so easy to understand that the Netrunner community is really great. Uh, it's not only here. Check out Green Level Clearance specifically if you're a newer player as well. But please ask questions. If there's anything you're watching on a VOD and you'd be like, that's weird, just ask. I don't understand it. Just ask, please. We'd love to answer questions. And not only me, everyone else here, I hope. So welcome. Hey, Kroar, there was definitely something about Nun and Borealis that I remember, but I don't remember extending past that. Shit, I really hope I'm not making this up. No one listens to Slums, guys. <laughs> uh, personally, I don't mind if the pendulum swings between little 5.3s and some 5.3s, but no 5.3s would be a huge bummer. I don't know about that. Hey, the Narendel, new to the game, was wondering if this ban list update is unusual in any way when compared to previous updates. No, I wouldn't say it's unusual in any way, not in a particular way. Yes, okay, the unusualness of the ban list, and we'll come back and sit and talk about this after we do the decklist of the week, is that this is notable for being one of the quickest released cards being banned the soonest after that. This technically isn't the fastest. There have been cards in FFG days that I think were out for about a month that were banned. This hits about the two month mark, if I'm not mistaken, uh, almost three months. Uh, wait. Yeah, almost three months. So that is the only notable thing about this. But otherwise, no, I don't think these bands are particularly noteworthy. Um, they're good. I think people are excited about him. Hey, bookkeeper, greetings from Poland. I'm catching the stream live means I should go to sleep soon. Yeah, it's like three in the morning. Get some sleep. You can watch the VOD. Hopefully you're doing well. I think there should only be one 5-3 per faction and one neutral. That's where I'm kind of leaning. I think the 5-3s should be limited to a large extent because so many of the problems in this game are all the 5-3s in a single deck. Yo, why don't we like 5-3s? I'm not going to go into it too deep because I've been kind of thinking about this um, after watching like a bunch of gameplay and thinking about the numbers of it and looking at some of the old decks. Um, I'm going to make a small video talking about it. I don't think it's an end of the world thing. I think it's just an interesting design thing um, that I get really frustrated. Or my thesis is startup right now is really cool. And one of the coolest things about Startup is now corporations have alternate wooden conditions, which I don't think they really strongly did uh, in the last Startup rotation with them um, uh, before uh, the big rotation. And uh, I think one of the exciting things about alternate wooden conditions, whether it's assets or damage or tags or any of the other stuff, is that corporations only have access to one five three agenda in Startup. It's only send a message and people don't generally play send a message. So if they're still going to win an alternate or going to pursue an alternate wooden condition that is outside of just scoring to seven points, they still have to play a fair few agendas in their deck. There's at least nine agendas, maybe more, which means that as a runner, if you struggle to interact with that win condition, or if you want to just try and win and close the game, it's way easier to do that as opposed to a format where there's maybe six agendas and 44 cards. It's way more to nine. And also because there's so many more agendas in the deck, the, uh, the runner, or sorry, the corporation more often has to use those agendas and actually has to plan to score them out. And usually their agendas further their game plan as opposed to being cards that they're playing keep away with. And I think that makes Stardew a lot more fun. That is not just hide the five threes while you have to disassemble the prison board. Mind you, ban list, so who knows, that's different. But the that underlying thing I think I've been realizing is why I'm enjoying Start of a fair bit more, is that there's enough agendas and central servers for the game to feel exciting. That's the short or long of it. I'll do a longer video, I reckon, in the next week. My week has been extremely tedious, but good. Got inspired to finally reclaim my music library. Hey, and ratings from iTunes. And boy, this has been like pulling teeth. Just like doing all the um all the like tagging and all that sort of stuff. Cause yeah, that is it's a bit of work. It should be bad enough that running the six agenda deck is a real challenge. Yes, I agree. It's almost finally done and migrated to Plex, and that's dope. Some Python DB skills came in handy. Hey, great. Glad to hear. We set up a Jellyfin locally, which has been great. And she's waiting your startup to standard jump video. Oh, I don't know if that's a real thing. Uh, I, I, I don't know about that thing. It's like... I probably should be doing it. But the problem is like that video changes a lot based off of the standard ban list. Um, for what it's worth, the startup to standard jump is actually like pretty minimal in terms of cards you have to know. It's like only a handful of things um, and it's gotten a fair bit kind of easier in some ways with stuff like this where it bans like the most powerful cards are still legal in startup. Is GFI considered a 5-3? Kind of. You don't see how much GFI anymore. Andre replied to me and then my internet died. I'm not saying these events are connected. I'm not saying they are. River the Witch, you can watch the last game of my stream to see why it can be unpleasant. Yeah, that was a bad one, unfortunately. Excellent to hear. I'm coming from Magic, and in the past decade, at the very least, bans have been indicative of the overall decline of the health of the game. No, so 
I'll plug this down below, but specifically, I just re-listened today to the interview that the lead designer, June, she did with um, uh, the Shadownet uh, for spoilers for Parhelion or maybe it was Borealis. And basically the underlying mechanic here is, or the underlying idea is that they want to push the game forward. So they don't want to print the most safe cards. They want to, you know, kind of push the envelope a bit. And I don't think that like really represents power creep. Obviously there's going to be certain cards that are a bit, you know, a bit overtuned maybe that are a bit overbearing, but I think that's kind of important and interesting. And I would take that over a set that is like 90% or 70% underpowered as which we've seen in some FFG releases where there's like 10 good cards and then like a hundred cards that are like, oh, I don't know what we're doing with these. That being said, and we're again, we'll talk about this in length once we do the decklist of the week i think a lot of these cards are very close to salvageable but because null signal does not want to do errata which i think it can fix some of these cards pretty easily they're just going to get banned and then we'll see ideas like these but tuned to some more reasonable uh, measure in the future so whatever it was a moment i wasn't proud of hey that's okay that happens man you can just walk away too Hey, PD is back. Hey, Fox is back. Ejectivist, how's it going? Is that what you're finding out? I have done a bit of testing and I've had good time. Can you tell us your thoughts on Charlie Kane? Charlie Kane is absurdly good. I think Charlie Kane is the most fun, obviously setup dependent. I think the best thing you can do, sorry, Arkham Tangent, we have, okay, literally I will time this. It'll be no longer than three minutes. Charlie Kane is really cool. He is the Arkham investigator, Jankivist, you did this, who uh, basically gets to boost their own stats based off of allies that you tap. And the allies you exhaust, you get their stats, which is really, really cool. Welcome to Arkham contingent my favorite thing to do are charlie kane and i've played charlie kane in two scenarios or two um campaigns already is summoning hound summoning hound is absurd summoning hound is a uh, summoned hound excuse me don't look at these these are spoilers i guess uh, Summon Hound is this ally that you can play uh, out of purple that gives you this really, really powerful ally that allows you to do a fast fight or investigate a base five. It's fast, which is really ridiculous. It has good icons on it. And this is so good with Charlie because it's a free action with above rate stats regardless. And of course, it's an ally you can play a lot of slots. Now, you might be thinking Summon Hound, that's pretty hard to deal with because it has this enemy you put in your deck. And when that shows up, it actually kills your hound. Your hound turns on you. So that's a problem. So you play, uh, what's the one where you're pulling someone out of the water with your hand? Uh, someone's going to call the interaction, but it is so absurdly powerful. Chance Encounter. So then you play Chance Encounter, which you can play in Charlie as long as you're going uh, Survivor. And you just get this really ridiculous engine where you can get the dog, mind you, with the 2xp version without taking the weakness. You just discard the dog, you get the dog, and then you can tap up the dog with your uh, secretary, I think, or your assistant, because um, she can unexhaust cards. So you get two free actions, well, you can play two dogs. It's so good. Charlie Kane's so good. Uh, investigators in, in that set are really good. Specifically pulling ratings out of iTunes and getting them into Plex are both nightmares. My metadata is generally on point, kind of, uh, kind of has to be once your collection is big enough. Running your own media server is the way to go. Yeah, it's really fun. You mentioned the video before. Do you have a link? You're Shiko. Uh, to which video exactly? Because I think the one I was talking about specifically is a podcast, right? So that would be a podcast, Slumscast, June. Uh, I'm going to say it's Midnight Sun. Because it had, they were talking about op cards. Shit, I'll link it after. I don't have it on me. Maybe someone in the chat can do, but uh, it'll be there. Did I just search Slums Cast? I meant to search the Shadow Net. That's why. I always get those names confused. You can tell anytime I try to say the Slums Cast or Shadow Net, I like stall for a bit. Yeah, it should be this one. Um, I think it's this one, but uh, it has a different thing on Spotify, a different logo. It could be this one. All right, let's catch up. I do this. It's not the five threes that you have an issue with. Hey Thanos, it's the style of core play that is enabled by having only mostly five threes. It's not exactly five threes themselves. It's the fact that the five three agenda decks. So it's two things, right? It's the fact that there's so few agendas and a lot of the agendas are incredibly defensive that proactively going out of your way to try to close the game by stealing agendas is both very difficult and generally the wrong thing to do. So you're stuck playing prison. It's like the thing you saw with the NBN decks that are now banned out is like going for the agendas is one of the worst things you can do. So you shouldn't do it. And I think on the upside, too, is there a lot of the long con slow prison decks have really bad win conditions because they take just too long. They take way too long. And this is something that also came up in that episode where like cards in theory, like mutually assured destruction, which are payout cards for asset spam decks. But it means that that asset spam deck can actually close the game out on turn 10 or turn 12 if they're going for their win condition. So I think it's twofold. I think it's that the agendas are too hard. They're too defensive. You're disincentivized to going to try and close the game off of them because there's too few of them. There's just too few of them. And then on top of that, uh, the, the win conditions for a lot of these decks are like turn 18, turn 20 plus. Like look at the Ag Infusion list from Worlds. It's just not fun. It's been zero days since the last off game breach. <laughs> hey, Clayton, how's it going? Arkham Tangent, new podcast. Summon Hand always looks so cool. Uh, 
Summon Hound is really good. Um, it's hard to play. Summon Hound has so many downsides if you're playing it normally. If you don't cheat it out with Chance Encounter, it's kind of night or day. Especially in Charlie Kane, where you don't care about the Arcane slot, let alone you have all the ally slots. Uh, Summon Hound's good. Okay, we're back on tangent. Let's start here. This is the Deckless of the Week. This is Poison Doll Pressure. This is from Powerless Cube. And I was, had the pleasure of playing and running into Powerless Cube a couple weeks ago, recording for some gameplay stuff. Unfortunately, that video didn't make it, but they were really nice. And they uh, they watched the channel. So how's it going? Um, let's talk about this deck because this is interesting. Once the misdirection goes, I kind of expect Mad to get a new life. I think even with that, I think it probably has a, I think it has a bigger life than people expected to. I think at the time that it was seeing play, uh, that there was a lot of stone chips. So that's kind of not good uh because obviously the boom plan but I, st I think it's probably a bit better than it looks like but the wayland asked the spam deck that's this thing off topic how about doomtown i haven't received mine yet we're not we can't <laughs> we have a boomerang at home okay so i talked last week this is a startup deck mind you we're gonna do startup and then we'll start talking about standard a lot to talk about obviously the ban list uh this is a quetzal deck and i talked about how anarch in um in this format in startup is actually in a really strange spot uh, Anarch doesn't really have good console slots. There's only two consoles in Anarch right now in Faction. One of them is Marrow, which gives you additional hand size and gives you the sabotage ability that's like whatever. Um, and then the other one is Carnivore, which is a kind of a card that a lot of people meme on. It's okay. It's not the best. It's okay. It's fine. And not in Quetzal, more so in specifically only exclusively Lou. And that's the issue, is that this is what I said last time we talked about it a week ago, is that in startup as Anarch, there's no bans, mind you, is that you're really incentivized to play Endurance because the Anarch breaker suite is a really strange place they're all fixed strength breakers and so that means things like mimic can't go over three strength but even bus on cleaver while they can break stuff that are higher than three strength it costs you an arm and a leg so generally you need to put additional slots into your deck things like either ice carver or uh what's it called uh, leech but on top of that people are just playing like k2cp turbine now, Anarch is a bit difficult because they don't have consistency. You're not playing Mutual Favor. You're not playing, I guess, self-modifying code doesn't exist anymore. Things like Into the Depths. So I actually think that Turbine Fixed Strength Breaker rig works a lot better in Shaper. That can actually produce a kind of sign one consistently. And of course, you have the Endurance to fall on. So this actually kind of proves the point of where you end up with Anarch decks a lot of the time. Now, I want to shout out one thing first. This Joker Oddball here posted this other startup list, and it's a Lou list, and they have this little thing, don't listen to the haters, and you know, I was like, okay, let's see what that is, and I click through that, and lo and behold, of course, it's me and my face, well, behind this ad for, uh, I reckon, Walmart, and it's the clip of me talking about this last week, saying that Anarch is in a really ugly spot. There's two ads? Who did the monetization here? Um, Anyways, that's me. So I don't know. So here I'm talking about exactly how Anarch has a really busted breaker suite, uninteresting identities, and then their console slot really sucks, which makes me not want to play them in start startup. And then still somehow this list has literally no breakers besides Mayfly and is running no console. And as Lou is the ID. So like, I don't honestly think that we've unproven anything here, but this is kind of the point too that's mimicked here with Quetzal. Again, we're not playing the Anarch Breakers because they're kind of hard to play, and oh, our console is Marrow, which is the least interesting card in the deck and actually probably could not exist. We could actually probably not play Marrow and this deck might be better. Like maybe we can play prepaid voice pad or even just a ghost tongue like without any other package. On that note, I clicked through this and I found this deck on the side, set it off and give hell from someone named Sysig. This is a good list. I was like, I like to see what new people are posting. This is, I'd be totally down to play. This looks really nice. I like Into the Depths of Benhar. That's a fun package. And then the Breaker Suite's strange, but like, I'll play this. Anyways, uh, I think you can do it. And I think obviously Esso works really well with Marrow, but I think both of the points kind of ring true here. Hey, Kat, what do you think of the new ban list so far? I have played just two days worth of standard, um, playing like reg-ass Anarch, and it's been bad. I tried like Turbine and Begulter, and I didn't install any of them ever. And then I played um, an Alice deck, and we'll have videos of both of those in the upcoming weeks. And the Alice deck was actually really fire and really fun to play as much as I don't like Alice, uh, or I wouldn't be the first to pick Alice. I think Alice is really fun. I haven't played any Corp, but so far from what I've seen in Standard, everybody is attacking you in a different direction. I have played against weird prisons, constant different prisons, uh, asset spam all the time, Wayland Rush. Like, it seems diverse, but I think everyone's pushing into the weird, strange plans more than I've seen, like, Score Behind Ice HB. And the Score Behind H Ice Behind HB matchups are kind of my favorite, but um, it's wild out there. I am actually still have to figure out. I have a card in the Doomtown game. I'll stop distracting you. What do you mean you have a card? Hey, Sophie, got really excited to play Mad, then I remember it cost three clicks. That's still good. You can still do it, Sophie. I think you got a double biotic and boom him or whatever. Hey, Dan, how's it going? Good evening. 
Prisons and other prisons and asset spam sounds fun. Yeah, honestly, I was getting a bit salty and then I played the Alice deck and I was having a really good time. But like, I'm a bit nervous to upload some of my standard gameplay over the next weeks because standard looks like a nightmare if you watch that gameplay. And I promise you it isn't. I think it was a bit of bad luck and people just testing out new stuff to see like what they can push. But um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it kind of looked miserable out there. Cat Mets for sure. Cat Beta for sure. Still don't understand what you're trying to say, Jack Twist. Court playing startup is way more diverse than the runner play right now. Yes, Yoshika, I think that is a problem. And then uh, we talked about this in the last video from last week. Sorry that we keep referencing the Metropolitan Grid lore. But I made a video talking about like how endurance is kind of necessary as a necessary evil in the format and like kind of complained that everyone's going to play endurance and it's hard to not play endurance. So I think on the on the runner side, um, you're going to see a lot of endurance regardless of what faction you're playing into. It's just kind of the best console and five influence is like a fair price for that. But the corpse side is actually like kind of fire. There's a lot of ways to attack people and things really good. So that's how you use biotic for jank purposes. Yeah, you can do it. It's fine. Let's talk about this deck. This is Quetzal. Quetzal's ability lets them break a barrier supper team for free once a turn. That's okay. That's actually kind of interesting. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of this ability. Classically, breaking barriers is the easiest thing for Anarchs to break. This would be so much more interesting if it wasn't code gates or sentries, but then like the thematic uh, nature of the whole thing wouldn't exactly make sense. Now, the idea with this deck, as the name says, is we're playing Matryoshka as a breaker suite. And again, this is it's not the cheapest breaker suite, but it's not the most expensive breaker suite. As long as we got a good enough card draw, we're only running once a turn, maybe twice a turn. And maybe Quetzal's ability means we save a Matryoshka once a turn. We can go a bit further than this. But we also have Poison Vial. And Poison Vial is like a really natural inclusion when you're playing Quetzal. It doesn't inherently do anything, really. It saves you a credit or two. Uh, not even if you use this with a Matryoshka. But this allows you to tack this on to Quetzal. So you can use Quetzal to break one barrier, and then you can Poison Vial through the other barrier subroutines. The issue in Startup is that like, that actually isn't that good. So say we look at this, right? We go to S Barrier. Z startup and we get a look at all the barriers in the format and we want to check how many of them see play and how many have multiple subroutines so let's do images only sort by faction just to see how relevant this ability combination can be so like out of the barriers we see we see echo and echo can get a lot of subroutines that's pretty important to know uh, for what it's worth cleaver does deal with this well in the format but also hush actually totally blanks this ice so we already have hush we have another way to do with it i think brand's the best case it is the hardest barrier in the format to break consistently, one of the hardest. So even if you click through it, you can poison vial through the rest of it. That goes for all barriers, uh, let alone, oh, sorry, all byroids. Eli's okay. Spending a voice and vial instead of saving a click, that's kind of, you know, it's whatever. And then the other barriers, a lot of them are single subroutine. You don't really see Ivic. A uh, half run, Klevetnik, Ping, Wraparound, uh, Ice Wall, Palisade, you all do with those with Quetzal on its own. So the only uh, subroutines that you actually get good value from Poison Vial are things like Pharos, Envelopment, sort of, I guess. Maskarovka, you can kind of leave it or you can kind of take it. And that's kind of it. It's kind of unfortunate. In this format, actually, most of the barriers you see are single subroutine. And the ones you see are like, you don't even see how much Maskarovka. So I don't honestly know how far this is going to land. I'm a bit uh, apprehensive about it. So there's a chance that like this influence here. And specifically, there's other ways to get good value from Poison Vial in Anarch. You can play Noom, which breaks two credits for a single subroutine on a sentry. And then you spend more Poison Vial targets. I think that's a good way because that actually is synergistic, barring it's not the way the Matryoshka is. It works OK with Botulus. That's totally worth noting. You can use one Botulus counter and then Poison Vial the rest. I think that's pretty sick. Um, but that's kind of it. But I think there's other ways that you could build that in the format. Maybe save some revolver bullets. At that point, you probably should be playing them. We also have Asmum Pula, the card uh, that allows you to tutor some stuff, which is nice. Again, we have some pretty important viruses, and technically we can pull Poison Vial. I don't think that's a priority for us, but we could do it. And then everything else is just basic Anarch stuff. Six Matryoshka. And Matryoshka I really like as a breaker suite if you are running central servers or you need to get accesses quickly and more powerfully. And at least we have two finality, which is a good spot to be, and three jailbreak. So we actually do have some like aggressive multi-access that if we get a turn one or turn two all the way up to like the end of the game is relevant. So that's kind of nice. Um, that's cool. Um, the Powerless Cube has suggested that we drop two Scrubbers, which I see a lot more Scrubber in Startup than I've seen uses for Scrubber in Startup. I think it's not a bad Econ card at all. Paying two to get two resources, if you can use that money on the same turn, that's pretty fine. And then from up from there, it only gets obviously better and better. There is Asset Spam or Asset Based decks in Startup looking at UNEH. So the value from this is actually pretty high. But the suggestion was to drop the two Scrubber and play two copies of Imp instead, which I'm actually a really big fan of. Imp gives you that sort of Scrubber type value, let alone allows you to get pressure on central servers, trash ice operations that you can interact with. And it also is something you can pull with from Pula in the matchups that you need it. And I think that's actually a really good change. I'm a big fan of that. And I think our MU will probably be on the edge of fine. 
We've Dawkins pass for some HQ pressure. That's okay. I uh, like an HQ card if we can have it as much as Jailbreak could do that. And then, yeah, the two marrow for me, I'm a, uh, I don't know. I honestly think we might be better off playing just, I don't know, something that gives us MU, but maybe not this console. I think even Carnivore would be too expensive. Hey, Jonald, I'm intrigued. Did you mean new meta standard looks like a nightmare post ban list? Uh, I don't want to say that at all because I don't know. But I'm saying if you see the games that I've recorded, which I'll upload because we're going to do some deck dive stuff. Uh, there's some really frightening stuff out there, but I don't think that's what the meta looks like. I think people are just like excited to try some of the weird stuff that could work now that endurance doesn't exist. I think that you're going to see some really good reasons why you'd actually want endurance back. This is the one thing that like the monkey's paw curls where people are like, oh, you're breaking ice for cheap. And now people are like sandberging remote servers and like doing all sorts of hideous nonsense. And uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Unbanned endurance or whatever. Nested access redux. Yeah, VK, how's it going? It's kind of like that. We put off less pressure. I think um, that's also the problem with this multi-axis and anarch is like all our multi-axis is two finality and three jailbreak, right? Like maybe we can go out of the way to import cards. Like maybe we can drop a... I don't know, a career fair and a Docklands Pass and play a Wake Implant. I think I'd be pretty happy with that because that's a really good multi-axis card that buys us uh, some good length. Um, but otherwise, it's just that. And we have to play, play uh, pretty honest Netrunner otherwise. But I'm excited for this. It's been a while since Quetzal has seen a uh, play on the, the Metropol Grid. Poison Vial worked with a card called Endurance. <laughs> yeah, I've heard the good stuff about that one. We could actually play it. And that's the thing is I was talking about this Quetzal deck, and I think I mentioned this during the video because we played this deck uh, playing our, um, uh, our what's it called, our half run combo deck from last week. And you probably can and probably should. Uh, and I know part of this deck list was not to play Endurance. You could drop the Pula, you could drop the Poison Vial and play Endurance. And this deck would probably be better. It would definitely be better, honestly. Uh, oops. Don't know the S word, the Iosoran, the no fun card. Yeah, you know how I feel about that one. I do not like that card. And that's what, so I talked about five threes a bit and we talked about how there's win conditions for these prison decks that have no interest in scoring agendas. But a problem is a lot of the win conditions are like, I'm going to win on turn 20. Sandberg is like the epitome of that. It's like, hold on on turn 15, turn 20. Now I have 45 credits. I'm not salty. I'm interested in your thoughts about Crim and Startup since it seems to get bashed more than Anarch DT Weird Breakers. A uh, Crim and Startup is like, kind of fire i don't know crimson startup's really really good it's easy to play all the cards are generally good uh i don't have anything bad to say about crimson startup at all i don't know um shaper and startup is really good anarch is i think the hardest because they their breakers are a bit more like specific and uh they have good economy uh but their console slot sucks so you just end up playing endurance and it turns out to be hyper competitive i don't think i have anything bad to say about criminal at all let's go I feel like I'm wearing a dark blue and then the whole background's purple. And so I look really pale and like a head floating in a void of purple. Problem is we use Philip Hue lights here and they updated the Philip Hue app to the point that my phone cannot run the Philip Hue software. I have no control over these lights anymore. I have no control. I'm slightly redder. Nah, I have to go hunt down my partner. She's in the next room. That's not hard. And ask her for her phone to control. The lights in the studio, it's rough. I always wanted to play a game, but I'm already in bed. Gustavo, how's it going? You can play this on tablet. You got one of those? You can play on a phone? It's a terrible experience. <laughs> Joining live for the first time in a while. Nothing like a bit of Dr. Andre to recover from COVID. Hey, JM, hopefully you're doing a bit better. Welcome to the stream. Use the PC app. Frisbee, I didn't know there's a PC app. The PC app like only let me do very minimal stuff. It was like scene setting. Is there actually just like a legitimate PC app that lets me control everything? Because if there is, that's a game changer. You don't look too washed out. Don't worry. Thank you, Trillian. Hey, Izzy, smart home, eh? Yeah, don't even. You're not wrong. You're really not wrong. We had a good run. We had a good like six years. And then eventually my phone's not good enough. They're all in the same... They're all in bed together. Recovering from a flu. Thanks for asking. Hey. Oh, that's why. Hopefully you're feeling okay. Andre needs a new Patreon tier. The Philips tier. Buy Andre a new phone. Ugh. Shout out to their patrons. Um, really appreciate. On that note, uh, we should be announcing soon enough our GNK. Uh, again, I have this. I have to pick it up off the floor every night because Nanako throws it. Oh, they left. That's weird. Um, but yeah, that's good. Oh, there's Sysig. 
Wondering if there's actually a feature for World Tree in either startup or standard competitive decks. Um, I think people are going to try. I think it's a bit of a mystery. Oh, we might add, like, oh, we're playing Matryoshka and no endurance. We're just going to get Stavka half -rund. Uh, This is a nightmare scenario. So if they're playing the deck we published, we're in a really bad spot. Uh, so it's kind of hard to tell, right? Because, like, pulling endurance and building an endurance deck, that's one thing. So I think people are going to try Isla. But, like, while obviously getting your turn one endurance is a really important thing, a big strength of Cabanessa Wu was not only getting the endurance, but, like, being able to click from something to put that on the table to endurance it away. Like, the sort of pull harbinger. Um, and you lose that. You definitely lose that. So it's going to be, no matter what, it's going to be way less powerful. Is it going to be unplayable? That's the question. Um, it's probably not going to be tier one. And I don't think, I think you can do some fine stuff with Shaper. It still probably might be good. It's just going to be less good. Maybe it's easier to play. I don't know. Uh, I don't know if I like this hand. We've card draw, we've card draw, we've no economy. Career Fair is the only econ card. And two steel skins. No, we can do better. Give me your IP. I don't control your <laughs> lights from here. Hey, OS Intelligence. I appreciate the offer. Hey, Uranium, how's it going? Hey, everyone, brand new to Neverwinter Player here. Looking forward to this. Please ask questions. Welcome to the channel. Thanks for saying hi. Welcome. Meet everyone. Everyone here is quite nice, except one person, but they 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 know who they are. Uh, all right. Spin Doctor in the Mozart, but please ask questions. We're playing Startup, so you might be more familiar with this card pool. And they're off. So Op, going to be able to trash stuff to draw stuff. They just Spin Doctor. Did Noodle keep or did Noodle Mull? noodle mold so who knows the value of pressure here i'm not a big fan of wildcat striking on turn one click one because with three credits honestly either way that they choose can be bad for us now the best thing though is we have career fair until liberated so if we want to career fair down to liberated accounts we can still do it on three credits so let's just kind of test the water and see what they do here i think when you don't have a lot of money and you have five cards in hand this is actually becomes an interesting decision i will say the credits are probably correct calling me out like that <laughs> All right, they gave us the credits. So what can we do here? We can run here on server two. We have nothing installed. We can obviously deal with barriers. So Hordum would be bad. Uh, I think we can go just run this. What are they going to do? Res a barrier? Oh, an enigma. Actually, that's the worst case scenario. That's fine. <laughs> that's actually really bad. All right, we'll get a botulus. And then the question is, what do we get? Poison vial? No, we don't need it. It doesn't do anything. Um, imp, fermenter. We have economy here. I think we're going to go for the imp to get some pressure on. And then we can always, like, last click run through this. They're all on two credits, though, which is great. Everyone's saying hi. Will you be recording posting content from your GNK? We will stream it. Oh, Regolith. That's a nightmare. We will stream it. We'll do it live. I don't think I'm going to play. I'm just going to, like, organize it and cast it. Def not fully functional, but I think you set it up in the phone app and have some limited control from PC after. Been a while since I tweaked mine. Okay. I saw someone play World Tree Isla seemed pretty decent. We saw World Tree Isla and started before the ban, and it was like fine. Okay, so ways to get through this, we really suffer. We're not playing pinhole threading, which we probably should be in every deck. Um, so how do we get through this? We'd have to like install the botches on this and run last click. This not only denies them six credits, but it denies them a free ice wall. For what is worth, we love free ice wall, but you know what I mean? The value of trashing this is a bit higher than it might actually look. We could have created for it as moon. We probably should have. I'm just going to jailbreak HQ. They drew a fair bit. There's one face down in archives, though. That might be an agenda. So then the jailbreak is not that good. So what's our turn here? We jailbreak HQ. We'll be on six cards. Then we install that run. Yeah, that's fine. Is it GNK patrons only? No, it should be totally open. If you're a patron, though, you automatically win your first game. <laughs> I'm kidding. Seamless launch. Okay, so we know this is a different deck. <laughs> I'm totally joking. <laughs> uh, let's just take that down. We're destitute. This is not good play. Applying for can nets, you know it. So we ran last click, so the end the run, or sorry, lose a click subroutine on this is fails to be relevant. Uh, but like obviously this is bad. Um, we just don't have economy. Again, could have been an endurance, but at least we have one Matryoshka. Hey, SND works. Howdy from New England Neverunner scene. How's it going? Go wild. If you need any help with the GNK, happy to lend a hand. Yo, appreciate that, Jeff. Um, I might need to ask you just even basic questions about like running stuff, let alone printing and sending price support to people. Now, what I was thinking for the event is that we can make it open. This is what I'm currently working. Any feedback would be good. Oh, they extracted the Enigma. That that tracks. Um, that it should be free open. Um, I can cover the cost of the cards. No issue. Well, that's a lot of money. Uh, and then from there, I'll have, if you'd like, you can pay what you want, except the money is going to go to charity. 
Like we're just going to pick a charity. And then if you want to pay, like I'll say recommended $5 Canadian on entrance. And if you want to pay that or not pay that again, pay what you can. Uh, it just goes to charity because this stuff has already been paid for from Patreon. No more buys except from Patreon. <laughs> That's why I call it a buy. That's why they do call it a buy. Do we have the imp to hand? I don't think we need to. Can the charity be me? No. Well, maybe. Probably not. It's probably not going to be you. Let's be honest. I'm going to go for somebody, something a bit more accredited. Uh, okay. What are we doing? Spin doctor is just money. Do we lose to money? Yeah. I don't know. What are we drawing into? Obviously we went to like really low credits, which is quite bad. Um, what economy can we like get out of here? Obviously we have wildcat. They won't give us credits. We just have sure gamble wildcat Two botulist. This deck doesn't have enough money. What would you add for more money to this deck? You'd add another fermenter. Um, you maybe import some money three liberated. We can do it. The river fund. Hey, Diagene, how are you doing? It's been a minute. Sorry, I'm not in your deck lists or in the, in, I was going to call it your deck list, but in the deck list section on, I haven't been on Slack in a minute. This is really bad. Uh, we have more money than we think we do. We just need to like go for singles, I guess. Like we're struggling to gain purchase. Okay. Okay. That's good to know. Uh, this second Asmund is not worth its uh, salt. We could run HQ, right? We saw, admittedly, we did see uh, Pharos, which is like the nicest thing to Poison Vial. We'll just go in again. We just need more card draw. Okay, never mind. Um, all right, we're so we're at, we're we're ahead, we're doing pretty well. Um, better, lucky than good. All right, so the game is in the bag now. <laughs> Whatever. Raindrops makes a little money. Do we have even raindrops? Do we have? I I think I need to play more raindrops. No, we don't. Um, I do want to play more raindrops. It is the card that consistently gets cut from my decks. It consistently gets the chopping block because I always make decks that are like 52 cards. Yeah, we are good. Damn. Sometimes you just get lucky. Sometimes you do. And like, I don't think that's a reason why you prioritize icing R&D. Like here, obviously, it's fine. They have everything. Their ducks are in a row. But you know what I mean, right? Like sometimes that just happens. I don't think that was like, oh, you should have iced R&D turn one. Raindrops so much better in play than it reads. I think so. Um, the question is also how to play raindrops intelligently because I think more corpse should just not res ice. And then you get like this really awkward inside job, which is not good for central servers. It's good for the remote. Um, but like if you raindrops HQ turn one, you just don't res. And so it becomes like a marginal econ card, but like with a cool bypass ability. I don't want to steal skin because, well, if we steal skin, we can still play liberated. Uh, okay. How? How do you do this? We just have to click for credits here. Install the marrow now does technically more damage, but like. I don't want to install it. Oh, sick. We lost the second marrow. That they can't ask for better than that. We are on Wildcat Strike. I'm a huge fan, but it's technically Econ Draw. I'm not a huge fan. Sorry to misrepresent you. Yeah, we're on two. Uh we played one on turn one. Yeah, we're in two wildcat strike. The thing is, like, if you need money, the corporation can just give you card draw. So it's not like econ. The the best case for wildcat strike is like when you're com medium comfortable, because then they're like, you can just have a bit more money. Uh, and four credits is obviously a bit is a bit of a uh, exaggeration. I do think we maybe should have got the poison vial just because we did see Pharos. And this is the one matchup that envelopment and Pharos are like pretty alive and well against Wayland. You're most likely to find poison vial targets. Uh, I still don't think we want to take that. There's quite a bit of money. You still want to liberate a fermenter early to make the game easier. 100%. Yeah. I wish we had three uh, fermenter, but we're trying to draw until liberated because we have career fair and we're on three credits. Honestly, we probably install that. We haven't drawn into a single gamble, but currently, like, it's hard for us to face check into this stuff. I guess if we run into, like, an anvil, it's it's not the worst. Um, if we run into a Pharos, we just don't take the tag. So we can consider doing it. We can consider plowing it to HQ. I do think if they had an agenda, though, it would go in a double ice remote server when we're showing no breakers on three credits. So I don't think running HQ is that good. Um, running R&D is probably where it's at. Yeah, let's run R&D. I don't think there's anything that punishes us. If they Stavka, it doesn't do anything. I'm surprised you haven't pulled a Fermenter with Asmund. Uh, we probably should have. I assumed we are going to run to better ice or to draw into more economy. We've been a bit unfortunate. But yeah, we should have pulled the Fermenter instead of the Imp. They didn't ice up at the time. All right, so it's a Pharos. That's obviously not easy to deal with in the format, but we'll just not take a tag, which means it doesn't have a face check, which is great. Asma can bring you Fermenter. Yeah, the thing is, like, Asma can bring you Fermenter, but then you paid three credits for your Fermenter. So, admittedly, all card draw gets that, but, like, I don't know. It's not, like, it's not that burst of economy early that you really want, you know? 
Okay, so we get a poison vial down. We get through this for free, which is a nice place to be. Uh, so I think we're just going to career for this down and click for credits. Like, they're not doing anything fast, so maybe we don't have to. I will not have the public thinking I want well, like Wildcat Strike. Wildcat Strike is the ultimate Punisher card. You're rarely happy with what the corp gives you. I think just so often Wildcat Strike just becomes another sure gamble, which that's a pretty good okay floor. It's just you can't play it on all board states. And then as soon as you play like Ghost Tongue or like um, Prepaid, it's, it's good. It's, it's good. But you're right. It's like not you can't play it on every board state and think it's going to go great. All right, they're going to get a one coster. Uh, an ice wall in front of R&D is like uh, kind of annoying. Oh, it's a Malapert. That makes sense. Now they're installing. We know they have a seamless in hand. Uh, let's get our cards. <laughs> ah, oh no, this is so rough. We have, we've gone through so many cards. We have no economy, one Matryoshka. Obviously this imp should have been a fermenter, but like that's not going to change everything. You made quite the inspirational speech learning how to edit audio and a baby's first mic is in the mail. Oh, get out. That's sick. What are you editing? I don't even know what speech I made, but I'll take full credit for it. I'm just going to run it. Like, they're going to spend some amount of money. Don't enigma me. Oh, it's Pharaoh's it all day. That's sick. That's all loves Pharaoh's. Might have been worth pulling the imp off just to get the Asmund down for Fermenter Vile. At that point, it's way too slow. And, like, we're going to go into, like, some cost fallacy where, like, we're so close to getting a draw that's relevant. There can't be three Pharaoh's, right? We can go HQ. We actually probably should trash the Spin Doctor. Holy sh sh shit. This has never happened before in the history of Netrunner. This is new. Then this has never happened before. You face check into two Pharaohs in the same turn? Our economy is ruined. Do we clear this tag? They'll trash our Asmund. <laughs> I don't think we clear the tag. What, are they going to retribution our marrow? Immediately, we should like consider contesting the Spin Doctor because they get to, if they score out, which they will, then we know they have a seamless. They have to sabotage one. That being said, the sabotage one is so unimpactful when the deck doesn't have any other sabotage triggers. Like, this is. I don't know. Hand size is probably not the worst. I just. Any other console could be better than this as long as it's fairly costed. <laughs> it's all the Ferris's. Wacko, how's it going? It's all Ferris's. It's Ferris's all day. All right. Well, um, now we really want our poison vial. I guess we move the imp to hand next turn. Do we remove the tag? I'm floating the tag. I don't care. Um, I don't think there's any. In oh, we have six hand size. I thought we had to make a decision. Hand size protects from end of the line. Yes and no. Like hand size protects from end of the line, but just having four cards protects from end of the line. Uh, people don't double end the line. It's really, really, really difficult to do that in this format. Because you need two tags. So like sort of, but not really. I'm making bad content, never on a podcast. Oh, sick. Okay, I remember we talked about that last week. All right, so they get to use Malapert. They're going to get seven credits off of that. They seamless it. That's why the Never Advance works. The Malapert lets them search for a card. They're going to get an Enigma. Our Bane. <laughs> Enigma. Uh, we weren't punished for flowing the tag, and now they're on nine credits. They sabotaged one card from HQ. I would love for that to be the Enigma. I guess we'll just take it, whatever. Honestly? I just want a, a card with the word credits on it. Like when you play this with nine cards in hand and five credits, they give you four cards. I like DZMs as my inner console. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like that's a more impactful console than Mero. It gives you a credit a turn. How much an influence is Panopticon or Pantograph? Excuse me. It's probably three. Maybe it's two. This is difficult. So now, like, we have to get the Asmund down just so that we can get our Poison Vial. Poison Vial is 2 and 25. Pantograph is 3. That's a bummer. Um, Yeah, this thing is, like, importing anything is good. Penny Shipper. But, like, imagine we had an Endurance. We actually could Endurance and then use our Quetzal and the Pharaohs. Like, we'd be good. We'd, we'd be we'd be okay. I don't know how to play this hand. I, 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 I don't know. I don't know how to play. I don't know how to play hand. Like... Then we're installing Asmus, so we go down to one credit to get a poison vial. What? We still haven't drawn another Matryoshka, five and twenty-five. Like this is probably it. We don't need you. Um, I don't think we're gonna get into HQ a lot. I imagine this is a really bad draw for this deck. I didn't. I did not expect this. 
But I also didn't expect three of the barriers that we can't deal with that easily without support. Like this is a wild situation for a deck that actually can't deal with this. And we disrespected it. Hedge fund, they're on 13. Remove tag install asthma for poison vial and fermenter, you're blocked away. I think installing Asmund for the for the fermenter is good, but I, again, I'm hoping Earthrise just draws it. Okay, well, we have money. That's something. Oh, we don't have a career fair. Now, if they score out, they're going to be on four. Um, so our plan is basically to deal with the Pharaohs. So we get down the liberated counts. We hit the liberated counts. That's why I also don't want to install this, because then it puts us so far away from the top deck of the liberated. So we install the liberated, hit the liberated, hit the liberated, install Asmund discard whatever card uh so we'll get the poison vial on that and then i reckon honestly botulus poison vial means we can pressure hq but i think the game's in r&d right now so we'll do the fermenter we have eight credits here we're not gonna need more credits complaints about money doesn't get money you're the master of throwing away cards that do not help the board state you can do it <laughs> I appreciate that compliment. Not to keep harping on it, but are we in a way better shape with a turn two fermenter? 100%. But like not drawing into econ 25 cards down, not expected, right? Like, yeah, you're right. We would have been. Uh, the imp was probably not right, but um, I, I think it should have gone better than this, right? Like that's a bit of a, a results-oriented angle on it. Above the law, trash or Asmund. I swear to God. I swear to God. <laughs> if they above the law... The Treasure Asmund, they might be stalling on the Malapert. I'm assuming that's what they're doing now. I'm trying to figure out that. But if that's the above the law and we lose the Asmund and the Bonchus and Poison Vial, we will put Asmund away in the binder forever. He will go back. We'll make another page at the back of the binder, which will just be for Asmund and then banned cards. Oh, no, it's an SDF. Okay, that's better. We take two me damage. That's fine. It's an SDF. Wait, what happened? Oh, cool. So they're on a lot of Pharaohs, so they can pull Sand Sands at instant speed. That's cool. So then they have all the other three twos. Um, again, we're not playing Pinhole Threading, which you should be playing Pinhole Threading in every deck because decks generally want to protect things in remote servers that aren't agendas. And the fact that we could run archives and deal with the Sand Sand is kind of the biggest deal. Botulus lets you run a central every other turn. Yep. Um, it also lets us run centrals every turn with Poison Vial. All right, so we're just going to yellow it. There might be agendas and archives. They sabotaged from R&D. Again, with the Spin Doctor, you kind of can do that. Mark Andre, how's it going, man? As in, the, all of our problems can be traced back to that decision. It's for Asmund and the intro deck runner. I don't, I don't think all the problems can be traced back to that. Okay, so they did hit off Steel Skin Scarring, which was nice. So we lost the Wildcat, and, and then we drew two. So that's kind of cool. So here we just have to lock the top of the deck, right? They're running a lot of three twos, so their agenda density should be about 10 agendas. Uh, so we can always like strap poison vial and then just finality and just send it. I think we're just gonna send it. Let's get a bit of money so that we can, um, what's it called? We can uh, trash things if we really need to. Ferris into Sanson is a very cool trick. Yeah, that's really neat. Uh, the seven to six to eight, like it gets really ugly and there's like a line here. So now we wanna lock R&D and then in theory this turn we can't cause we don't have the botch list, but we should also sweep our HQ. It's more important to lock the top of the deck. And maybe we have a shuffle effect. So this is actually like, hold on, this is wrong. This is straight wrong. We need a, we need a, we need to shuffle first with Spin Doctor cause there might be agendas and archives. And then we don't want them to shuffle and break lock. So we have to deal with this first. Yeah, challenge spin first. Yeah, white is totally. Me, who play, oh, hey Dave, why well, play Ferris and Op? No good six cost or the player living 20, 30 sand sand time. There's very few cards in the game that cost six to res. I think in startup, this is actually the only six coster, but I might be wrong. All right, now a finality, just so they can't shuffle. Very important. So we get a Quetzal, doesn't matter which one, and then we get a Poison Vial. That's cute. Hey, Piotr, how's it going? Hope the stream's going well. It's going good. Envelopment, Atlas, nice. A Sve, no. Ice wall. Okay. So it was. What was it? <laughs> Envelopment. That's a problem for us. Ice wall Sphi. Now they could have enough agendas in hand just to like smash them out. And also the cool thing here is that if they score an agenda, they will shuffle their deck with Malapur. So we actually can go now back in jailbreak and see two more cards. Sphi then Ice Wall. Thank you. All right. So they can safely sabotage one from the top of the deck. Uh, Actually, no, they can't because if they use Malapur, Malapur happens first. So they can still sabotage from HQ. I was going to ask, how are you going to activate Poison Vial? Yeah, the ID does it. So they did from HQ. They used Malapur to get, they declined Malapur. So they didn't shuffle. That's totally the right thing to do. So we know the next two cards on R&D. 
If they have a 2-1 or 3-2 in hand, obviously they win. So all we have to do is smash HQ. Many, many moons ago, we threw out this like HQ card, which actually would be really clutch this turn, so we can flush much, most of HQ. But I think the only line we have here is Botchless HQ Jailbreak um, and Prey. Yeah, and Prey. Uh, let's just take some money, because we have to trash something. I don't know what we'd have to trash. Spin Doctor, maybe? So then we get a... Oh, we don't actually have to do that. Wait, wait, wait a sec. Wait a second. We don't need to do this. We can just send it. I forgot. We have our ability. All right. So we can just use our ability here. We can use the botches if we want to go back. Oh, no. Wait, wait. Oh, this is a mess. Hold on. Hold on. Sorry. Obviously, we do this. Don't. I'm flustered. It's fine. All right. We'll see two. Extract. Biotic. That's scary. Okay, so we know Extract Biotic and there's an envelopment. So there's only one unknown card in hand, if I'm not mistaken. So what can we do now? We have Matryoshkas. It's hard to deal with Pharos, but it's doable. Uh, so if it's the unknown card in hand, we lose. We know the next two cards. It's an Ice Wall into Sfigator. So they have Envelopment, um, Extract Biotic Labor. All right, so we'll just set up for another finality. We have one more finality in the list in 18 cards, so we want to draw into that, let alone we can yeah, jailbreak. We have to deal with ice sooner than later. That's the issue, though, um, because we know they have a lot of it. They're going to have ice wall and envelopment. So at least we would ice wall Matryoshka, and then we'd go through this. But if they res at least the, the envelopment, they're in a bad spot. So I think it's either... I think all we do is click for credits. We can show we're on a moment Matryoshka. Otherwise, we do Matryoshka, Matryoshka. We can always do Botulus, Charge R&D, and we'll get through next turn. But we know the next two cards of the deck... So we can probably draw once and just get credits. Um, Earthrise Hotel for one is fine because there's a lot of money in our deck. I think all our sure gambles are there. Watchless R&D, I don't think we're in any rush. Like, they haven't extract anyways. Zero cost has a spin doctor, so that breaks R&D and draws them two unknown cards. So now that's a, such a sick play because they have a Sansan -San and a Biotic in hand. Now, they shuffle first, so they drew two unknowns. So this is actually such a cool play because here they get Biotic and install and win. If they have a 3-2 in hand, we lose right now. And we did not respect that that's really hard to play around they were only at five credits too we could have charged the remote server and trashed it if we respected it i don't think they have it because they had biotic in hand so it seems to be on r d so that seems like two barriers okay opponents cheating tbh since ferris is one of the seven wonders in the ancient world and spiritually unique all right we didn't draw into burst economy i thought we would we played no sure gambles there's three and 15 so how do we get through this um, we don't know what any of these are. They could be Envelopment Ice Wall. Um, I think that's the only two ice that they could possibly have that we are aware of. So the other option now is like we do Earthrise. Sorry, we do um, Matryoshka. We host a Matryoshka. If we host another Matryoshka, we can break through two ice. But the problem is we'll only have six credits. It's a really cool Corp deck. Yeah, yo, Sauce, how's it going? There's like a way more tricks to it than I reckoned. Um, Excuse me. So that would put us on six credits. Ice wall is not a problem. That's one credit. Envelopment is a bit more annoying. Um, it's five strength, so that's going to be three credits. And then we have to break four subroutines. So that's seven credits. So unfortunately, we can't hit R&D very easily. Immediately, if they res envelopment into ice wall, that puts them down onto uh, three, which is like kind of doable. Now, we'd have to 50-50 the Botulus. Hut shuts down the envelopment, does it? It does, but we don't know the order, VK. So we'd have to 50-50 it, right? Like, Because we can either 50-50 with the Botulus or the Hush. I think maybe the safest play is we put Hush on one, envelopment, uh, Botulus on the other, and we just fly. Hush envelopment? Which one is it? <laughs> Do you know? <laughs> can you just run and then run again? If we run again, the envelopment is rezzed. Wait, is the text on envelopment? No, because envelopment gets the subroutines. teams. This ice gains and the run. For, oh, no, we blank it after. No, you're totally right. When you res this, place four power counters on it. When your turn begins, remove, remove one hosted power counter. This ice gains and the run before it's for each hosted power counter. So we, it doesn't matter when we blank it. Never mind. Yeah, okay. So, but the thing is, if we face check it, they res the ice wall, then we're stuck. Like, they don't have to res envelopment because even if it's the ice wall, like, this is the big issue here. Yeah, I thought it actually gained the subroutines. It, it doesn't. The subroutines are attached to the text. Yeah, so if you blank the text, you blank the subroutines. Ob, maybe the best idea ever printed. I really do think it will be, and then eventually it's going to be broken. I think Ob is going to restrict the design space of the game forever. Unfortunately, it's amazing. 
they res the ice wall, then you bounce off of it and you know which one's the envelopment? Yes, but we don't have enough clicks. We face check, install, install, run. But the problem is like we can't install, install. Matryoshka has two installs, right? Like we just one click short. We probably should have pre-installed a Matryoshka last turn, but obviously we didn't expect this. Because like if we face check here, they have to res one of them. Whatever one they read, then we have to install the Matryoshka. That does nothing. And then we have to install. Oh, we could do botchless hush run. Oh, no, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. I like that. Uh, I think we do a single run and then we jailbreak later. Yeah, yeah. Install botchless totally. I forgot we had botchless. They also could have it in hand, but like I, if they have a 4 2 in hand, they might have it in hand. I'm just going to hit continue to movement. Come on. Ah! <laughs> All right, well, hey, that was, we had a good run. We had a good run. All this planning. Your install would be Botto on the ice. Yeah, I forgot we had Botulus. Okay. Well, shit. At least now, if we um, we if we if Botulus doesn't run and they res and, and, and what's it called? We're in an okay spot. Now, the downside is that this is uh, Enigma Ice Wall, which I think it's more likely to be. <laughs> what an Enigma. That's such a good Enigma. Enigma is underrated. But here... So if, if it's an ice wall enigma, so if we put the botchels in here, run, they just res an ice wall. That's obviously really bad for us. I don't think it's an envelopment. I think it's more likely an ice wall because they understand that the tax is just getting a barrier that's relevant. It's not this. Man, with huge hand size, I would love to be playing, what's it called? Um, Banhar. I think Banhar is so good. Okay, so that's off the, off the table. Um, unfortunately, if we use our poison vial, we could like sweep HQ. And so if they have on more four twos, four twos are the only thing that can be in HQ. If they have a 4-2, they need 4, 5, 6, 7 credits. So they're one credit short of scoring a 4-2 on the Sans end. Who underrated Enigma? I think a lot of people sleep on Enigma. Right? Like, you don't see Enigma in a lot of these op, like, startup lists. People are just playing Hordem and uh, whatever. Trashing the Sans end would be nice. Yeah, trashing the Sans end would be good. That might be it. But the problem is we know they have a Biotic. So Biotic, at, at least they're a credit short. But, like, it's hard to challenge both of these. Ah. So like we can always botch this and run back and then they res an ice wall. I think we have to just force them to do that. I think we have to force them to do that. I don't think anyone underrated them. People just take it for granted. I think that's it. I think people take it for granted. Especially in this format with Buzzsaw. <laughs> it actually is a fair bit worse. I don't know what to do here. I don't think there's anything in archives. Enigma in the course I never saw play because Yogg existed. The value of Enigma changed drastically throughout the years. Yogg was everywhere, so nobody played Enigma for like the first three years in Netrunner. Shit. I think we can go HQ for a single. What do we know in there? We know uh, Biotic Labor. We know The Extract was played. We're pretty sure they have an envelopment in there. But then we use the Poison Bot, which is bad. Build the dolls? To what end, right? Like six credits? We just lose next turn. Like We kind of have to get a, a mad access here. I'm taking way too long, sorry. I just got to do something. I'm taking way too long here. So it's either flush HQ, which eats the poison vial, um, or hit R&D, and I think that's the ice wall. I think it's a mess up if it's in development. I'll still try. We have no better way to run with this. Actually, no, we do it. We have the vial. Let's go for it. If they show us an ice wall there, they have to win off the top. And at least if they spend one credit that has an impact. We want them to, oh, thank you. It's, I can't believe that wasn't the ice wall. Oh, but they shuffled before they drew, actually. We should have known that was an development because they did not draw the ice wall because the ice wall got shuffled. So that's perfectly fine. They're on one credit. We bought ourselves breathing room. We can run the server next turn for very, very free. Um, so that's fine. And then we can just jailbreak, but they might have it in hand. But now they need to have at least two credits. And they have how many unknown cards in hand? Uh, this was one of them. So they have two unknowns in hand. One came off the Spin Doctor, one just came off a mandatory draw. Yeah, building the dolls is possible, but like they're very likely to win the game in a turn or two. So putting these two together and then spending more credits probably isn't it. Summon Hostile Takeover. Yeah, Hostile Takeover also, like we don't lose here because luckily they spend more than... Oh, actually, no, we lose a Hostile. They can draw, install, advance Hostile. You're totally right. Yeah. They can draw once for Hostile. I've never seen a Hostile scored on San San City Grid, but it, it, it does feel gross. Yeah, we're going to get in uh, next turn with the Hush for sure. Admittedly, Trash this Ice uh, means they get a 4-cost here. I don't think there's any 4-cost like, defensive upgrade. 
Do we have another vial? Yeah, we have one more in 15. But the game will be over before we find it. Unless it's the next card in the stack. It's just so hard for us to spend a click drawing. Spin Doctor to start. So two Extractor in, because they just need Panic Money, but they can't even play the Extract here. So I don't know if you want to shuffle that in. Because now they also lost their ability to break R&D lock. So using the Spin Doctor there might be strange. It also put them further away from drawing into an agenda, let alone a hostile if they're on it. Border control? Yeah, there's no border control at startup. But yeah, border control would be the fear for envelopment in standard. How's it going, dear, by the way? Dear, I reckon I should be saying D, not dear, right? Maybe that's a thing you <laughs> for your friends. Um, okay, don't know what that is. Um, if it's an agenda, they can score it out obviously next turn. Okay. Hey, we got her from enter. So I think we just fly. I think we just fly here. I think we just hush and then we go into uh, straight into what's it called? Into jailbreak. Immediately with three credits, there's not much they can res here. But I think we just start here. Blank that text. That's kind of cool. My name is D. My handle is Deer. No preference. Okay, cool. Because I've heard more people say... Uh, I've heard people from your testing group say D. So I, I don't know if I was messing it up or not. All right, envelopment. So it just has a subroutine. It just trashes itself. So we lose the hush. But like, hey, we did it. We believed in ourselves. Oh, wait. Oh, oh, that should... Oh, no, all good. Yeah, Hush is in no way implemented on JNet. Hush MVP, once again, Hush is like really getting started, and it's on the verge of being reasonable and standard. Killing the Sacred Deer is a great deck name. It is. Hush development is sick. Never thought of that before. Honestly, I never thought of it before. I thought cards like Hush and like Echo gained their subroutines and their text was the ability to gain additional subroutines, but it's not the case. The subroutines are checked constantly by the amount of power counters, which means Hush actually works. They have a Stavka that is just good enough for us. Like that is just taxing enough. Uh, this is just too strength again. We won't see any, maybe they have a virus, but... Uh, All right, Quetzal has been really relevant this game. Like, very good. The fact that we found three Pharaohs in a, sub in a format that doesn't have a lot of these. Come on. Damn. Damn. Shit. I like to pat myself on the back for calling how decent Hush would actually be during previews. I think Hush in standard still might not be a thing. I think in startup it's good. But also the value of Hush changed based off of what we've seen. Okay, now we just have to run server three. So they have half run. That's annoying. Uh, server 3, let's see what they can res. They can give us an enigma, that'd be bad. They didn't ice server 3, that's significant. Well, they just didn't have the money to, right? Like, even if they installed an ice here. We know they're not trying to hostile. This could be a spin doctor. Everything's an enigma, that's fine. Everything in this game's an enigma. We keep getting enigma And now we're getting our matryoshka. Um, I think if for mentor may not be it, but there's no way. As much as having a career fair for another Earthrise is pretty good. I don't know what to get rid of. It's probably the match. Uh, so like how many turns for this to be good? On two, on two, After two turns, it's click for uh, two clicks for three credits. That's bad. It's better than clicking for credits. How much ice could we possibly have to break, you know? Enigma's been so good. Are we just playing starter today because we still want to play Endurance? <laughs> Solomir, how's it going? I didn't see your deck list. Did you publish it? Maybe I didn't look hard enough. Oh shit, it's a Sphi. We should have known that. So they just shuffled their deck so they're drawing into Unknown. They're doing such cool ways to break R&D lock, let alone just to give the modicum of credits they need to fast advance. So they just trashed... Wait, what did they trash? Oh, they didn't shuffle because they trashed it face down. Wait, what did they trash? So I think they trashed the Unrest, which doesn't fire op, but now they have money. Okay, so that means we know the top deck of R&D because they didn't draw. But that's scary because next turn they can trash use Feed to Gore, so like we can't lock R&D. There's a small chance there's an agenda in HQ, as much as we know most of the cards in there. Mystery Ice, yeah, okay. So we have one finality and 10 cards, and I think that's the only way we win. How do we get through this on finality? It's hard. Uh, we basically need to get down two Matryoshka. Oh, F. we can't deal with Ferris anymore. But now next turn, they have seven credits. Like... What do we do? It was cool. And that's the problem is like, they're going to have enough credits no matter what we do. 
to be able to like speed to this to shuffle because they know the top card of R&D is not an agenda. Dolls, we could install dolls, but like, so say that we, sure gamble, we go to 10 credits, we install a doll and then we have seven credits and we can break one ice. What are we breaking? This cost us six credits or oh, five credits. We can float a tag actually pretty safely, but like we can't pay five credits for a single access. Nice rig, bro. Anarch problems, right? That being said, like the Quetzal and all our other tricks have made us not want to install our breakers. It's just like these are expensive. There's no way around it, but th these are good ice. I think we have to play for finality. The problem is like we're going to need finality and then still three breakers. Like we have no way of dealing with Pharos besides drawing. We need finality and poison. So we just have to hope they don't have it. Um, I don't think we can like run archives once. We don't have dirty laundry in the list. I feel like you set up dolls this turn for finality next turn, but we need both dolls and finality and enough money. So we have to draw. So like I think the most amount of draw we can get is like sure gamble. We can query for it down earth rise. So that's two of our clicks. Uh, we don't have time for liberated. So let's draw once. That's a click for three credits. So we draw again. Like none of this matters if we don't find our finale. So like we just have to hope they don't have it. But with biotic and this four two, like they probably have it. Gamble's doll doll flush the sand sand. Uh, they have a biotic in hand. Flushing the sand sand doesn't really change much because they went off hostile and they went off the biotic because they have seven credits. Flushing the sand sand will just make us not be able to win because we will no longer be able to uh, run centrals anymore. We just will run out of money. We have one more poison in the deck. All right, it's an ice wall. <laughs> nice. <laughs> We're actually going to need more Matryoshkas out here. That's so wild. No, that's a hostile. Ah, it's a spin doctor. They still have biotic hostile, though. They have biotic into um a 3-2. They can do biotic install. Come on. They just have it. Yeah, they have a biotic. There you go. Yeah, we can't interact with that. I don't think they're on hostile. Good game. Thanks for the game. So, like, our early game economy, if we got our economy up a bit faster, is obviously a pretty different game. Uh, whether I messed up by not pulling a, a fermenter, that will be for the ages to tell. Um, honestly, I thought we were going to draw into more economy sooner, so that didn't seem like a necessary line. It turned out to be necessary in hindsight. If we had more money, what could we do? Uh, we'd have to lock R&D, but, like, we got access on R&D when we needed to. And based off of how the spin doctors fired, even if we flushed R&D there, we wouldn't have seen anything. And mainly they did shuffle, so who knows? Um, but yeah, that's wild. Uh, triple Pharos, we're the best deck to deal with it if we have our poison vials down. Um, but unfortunately, yeah, everything else is kind of difficult. And again, let's go back to slide one. It, what would the game been like if we played Endurance? Probably a fair bit better because we actually can run every turn uh, relatively well. Um, it's a shame. That's how it is sometimes. This marrow is useless. It, yeah, it doesn't do anything. Anything in archives, I would say definitely zero because uh, they... Did two spin doctors pretty leisurely they even just destroyed a spin doctor so i don't think if there's anything in archives they had many many opportunities to deal with it and that's the problem with like sabotage sabotage is an effect on its own it's like so middling unless you're playing a lot of sabotage and consistent sabotage because just sabotage one they just throw out their worst card from hq are we pressuring hq this game almost we're not we could have slightly but it didn't make a lot of sense and again we got really lucky there off the top a hey, noodle good game nothing in archives yeah from jnet that makes a lot of sense right like two spin doctors let alone three spin doctors went through there's some really good shit. I've never seen the Saint Sand play off the Triple Pharaohs. That's really fun. That's really, really cool. How's it going? Calling the Aegis for the Fermenter path, but not if we had the Endurance sounds bias. If we had the Endurance, you actually need the Fermenter even more because it's a bit expensive to put down. And we did not have early economy at the beginning. That's the deck. I think it's interesting. I don't think it dis... And not that it was set out to disprove, but I think it kind of does highlight some of the issues. Is like the Anarch Breaker Suite is strange. It's strange. And then, like, a lot of these tricks are just not as probably good as Endurance, right? No great Anor console and startup anymore. Yeah, that's the biggest issue. There's no console. Dave, you called out that your name showed up in the Patreon. Thanks for the first time. I think it was the second time, but I might be mistaken. Hey, Debogs, only just joined, but excited to go back and see your thoughts on the bands. I'm sure it's been asked. We're actually going forward to it. I'm sure it'll be asked, but you do plan to go start doing some standard video streams. Or are you still enjoying startup? Yes, let's talk about that now. Let's do the news. So... Hey, Anarch Breakers may fly Banhar Endurance. Exactly, yeah. And I think Banhar is really good. I think this list could play Banhar, and that's a good way to use 7A in size for what it's worth. But then you want to spend your influence on, like, uh, Nuka, stuff like that. Nightmare on Archive Street, Third Portland Kickoff. Oh, you did publish it. Okay, I must have missed it. Sorry, Solomir. This is Solomir's list. Solomir said to basically be very, very harsh. Oh, that's a good write-up. This deck is effing disgusting. Uh, there's a white blade curse in it. Um, avert your, your poor eyes. This is uh, standard. 
Stock buyback, hate it. Hangeki, hate it. There are so many like negative agenda points stock buyback decks recently, and man, are they not fun to play against. I feel like, I feel line, if you're on Vile, Numb is good. Yeah, we talked about that when we started the deck. Is like, there's actually not that much synergy in this deck with Poison Vile. And it's very easy for you to play a different rig like Noom that actually can get Poison Vile value. Because right now, Poison Vile gets all. That's the only interaction. And Poison Vile actually does work with other stuff like Noom, Revolver in theory. But like, there's other ways to use get value from it, which is cool. I told you. Yeah, I believe it. I'm not big on Thule. You're playing a single Manta Grid. That's weird. Uh, I like Manta Grid. <laughs> I would like to make this card do something, and I think it can. Yeah, you did miss it. We'll go do it. That's fun. Hangeki. Are they worried about accessing cards? I guess they are. When you love the game so much, you just want to play two-hour games. <laughs> yeah, right? Can we just play more? I wanted more, but Eric told me to cut them. Yeah, they're the worst card probably in the deck. It's wild that you can play 11 agendas and then like still play Yardona stock buyback just because of all this other nonsense. Um, yeah, I don't like negative agenda point cards. I really don't. You should make the game longer. It's weird. Like, it was really weird. There was the idea that games want to be faster and win conditions get, get close to it. But like almost every Thule game you play is like 45 minutes. Maybe this one's a bit faster. But like cards like this are big contributors to the fact that the games are just so long. Um, I don't like it. If you hang Geki into an agenda on turn, they can't pay the Thule tax. Oh, whoa, it's an operation. I thought this was the one that you had to advance. Choose an installed card card. The runner may access that card. If they do not, remove Hangeki from the game instead of trashing it. Otherwise, had a Hangeki. That's really funny. That's honestly really funny. Same with Hendrik. Oh, wait, this is sick. I did not know what this card did. And I didn't even bother to ask. Oh, that's awesome. Well done. That's really cool. I enjoy Thule a lot. That's kind of really cool. I think the other card I really want to play in Thule is the, uh, the Reprisal, but no one's playing it. And I think the Reprisal is secretly really good. Only went to time once. That's not bad. That's not bad. This is after a run, not after you access a card, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Successful run. That's super sick. That's super, super, super cool. Okay. Yeah, Reprisal. Uh, what's it called? Yo, congratulations, Slomir. Um, What's it called? Does anybody know the name of the Reprisal? Riot Suppression. Thank you. Riot Suppression is so hard to use. Try it in another iteration of the deck. This is the card that I've seen no one play in Thule, and I think it's really good. So reprisals all have the same clause, play only the runner trashed a court card during the last turn. And this says the runner has three fewer clicks to spend during their next turn, which is obviously really good considering that you care about clicks as inherently to just play Netrunner, let alone against Thule. And it says the runner may immediately take a core damage to prevent this. Seems pretty like safe. Seems like a, what's it called? A confirmed combo, but who knows? I like Riot, but the trash requirement limits a lot. Yeah, but a lot of these decks have like so many trash cards, right? And I don't mean that Manta Grid. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no i mean like there's still a fair bit of things that you want to trash like there's a lot of upgrades there's a lot of assets it can hang out in hand but yeah it's it's a bit situational but it's fine the timing to line up riot suppression with another play like an agenda jam is wonky yeah that's the thing is you need to get make good value from it you need to fork someone but the cool thing with riot suppression too is like you play it before you do the rest of your turn to see like oh they're actually taking three less clicks then i'll jam um Obviously, yeah, you know, that will vary, but it's, you don't have to commit to it. Like you don't spend your whole turn committing to it. You just see it at the top, but I get it. Yeah, it's, it's a bit hard. Feels relevant after trashing upgrades. Yeah, totally. Right. That one turn where you want to use it for some reason, runner didn't trash anything. Yeah, you can hold it though. No, I hear you, but you can hold it. Right. Suppression with the discard doctor seems sick. The discard doctor. Who's the discard doctor? Keeling? Maybe? Deck doesn't have enough ice to be able to hold agendas in HQ safely. Oh, okay. That's cool. Jam your agendas. All right, let's talk about some stuff. This happened. Shout outs here. I was thinking of making a night's nice video talking and summarizing standard ban list. In fact, I was thinking of making a YouTube short because I've never made one of those. I don't want to kind of see what that looks like. But don't, I didn't. Do you know why? This video is so good. Um, this video is actually really quite good. Yasengrim put this out uh, just on the weekend. It's never a saved ban list. It's a bit clickbait, he says. Uh, but this video is really well presented and it goes through the ban list explaining why it happened, a bit of what we think the future is going to look like. And it's really well presented. I really like Jeff's tone here. It's a, There's certain things that he's a bit critical about, but in a really respectful way. And there's obviously like a lot of um, uh, praise and and like thankfulness to the all the testing and the team that has to go behind writing these fantastic articles, uh, let alone, um, you know, doing all the testing to figure this out. This is a really good video. It'll be linked in the description below. But this is the article that's put up. I am this old when I figured out this is pronounced Crofi instead of Crofi, but 
I feel like I should have figured that out. And it's four cards have been added to the ban list of standard Netrunner. Now, Cabinets Wu, Endurance, Nana Civic, Drago. And these articles are really good. They have been very consistently good uh, when the standard ban team communicates about their changes, talking about what happened, why, what they've been seeing in the meta, what they want to do going forward. I highly recommend you to read this uh, if you want a good understanding of what is valued in Netrunner. Um, it's really well written. I like it a lot. Rip ship. Yeah. Reference missing. How's it going? Is Andre version of YouTube short of normal 10 minute video? <laughs> I get called out. Yeah, no, it's 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 about 14 minutes. It's fine. Oh, hold on. Clayton, Solomir's deck may be mean, but fortunately playing with him is so pleasant you hardly notice. Aw, Clayton. I'm organizing my Doomtown cards into binders. Glad the stream is up. Brennan, do you get the new stuff or the old stuff? Optical sink the boat. I'm sad about Nana Civic. What a cool Glacier card wrecked by no remote only clause. Yeah, that's like the big thing here. And this is called out. And I think Jeff also calls it out that they he wishes it was a bit different too, to some extent. But a lot of these cards could be salvaged by an errata. And I think that's true. I think in the history of Neverland, there's been so many really cool ideas and really cool cards that could be saved by a simple errata. Uh, one of the first big functional erratas we saw was, uh, ooh, that didn't work for some reason, was this wireless net pavilion. So this card came out recently and uh, like a month after, two months after it came out, it won Worlds. And you notice there's actually a difference between the Netrunner DB text and the actual image of the card. It doesn't have this clause here. It doesn't have this diamond because it didn't used to be unique. So if you're playing around, this was 2015, Dan Dorgenio put together a deck where he went to tag me, played a bunch of resources that punish you for having tags or punish the corporation, excuse me, for having tags. And then you just couldn't trash anything because it cost six credits or eight credits to trash your first resource, let alone there were the cards called like Fall Guy at the time that said, oh, you tried to trash my stuff. Uh, you actually just trashed the Fall Guy. Uh, and that was a problem. And this deck was really, really quite good. It wasn't very interesting to interact with as much as it was actually relatively high skill cap for the runner to play, to put enough pressure on the corporation while also setting up. I'm a big fan of the deck. Uh, this got eroded. And this sort of thing is something that FFG hadn't done much more after that. They did some like functional erratas when it came to like strange rule things, like this gets hosted in this order, like technical stuff that to 99% of the population or 85% of the population doesn't functionally matter. Uh, Null Signal doesn't want to do erratas and I get it. It's kind of weird here because we play a lot of times on this channel, Netrunner, like it's a digital card game. We're on JNet playing with people online. And if you're used to games like, I don't know, Hearthstone uh, they or Marvel Snap, they do erratas and they do changes to digital cards. Obviously, it's super easy to do that on a pretty consistent basis. In fact, some people wish they did it more often than not, but that's not the case here. Let me just catch up on chat. I was going to ask about that. Runners are too rich, but doesn't convert to wins or runners are favored in standard. I have no idea. It's hard to tell now about standards, but one of the big call outs, I know Jeff was talking about that, is that the economy of the game needs to be addressed. Not so much these cards, like maybe the issues is that endurance is really good, but the problem is like the economy behind it is a bit overwhelming on top of this boat itself. I think Jeff calls it out a bit better and Crofi actually responds to that too, which is really cool on YouTube saying like the economy of the game is something that needs to be challenged directly going forward because it's kind of maybe a bit out of control on one side. And that's something that it's really hard to address by just like banning a couple cards is the sort of thing that like rotation and continual good design will iron out the same sort of way that on a level on a like a pretty large level that uh the null signal folks seem to want to print less horrible face check ice and more interesting decision making ice and that's something where some new ice is going to come out and it's kind of look kind of unplayable but eventually it'll fix itself it's a hard thing to fix over an evening drago had to go can't argue with anything the ng team said i think drago probably had to go but i think drago also could be eroded it would be an interesting card was that before Astro? Um, Astro was alive and well at the same time. Oh, you're right. The Astro errata was a pretty meaningful errata, but that came on way later in the life of Astro. That actually, that errata happened very, very late. I don't really know why NSG is anti errata. It just is about reprinting. So yes and no. Because for what it's worth, Nelson Signal Games has uh, recently done an errata. In fact, if you bought Parhelion, you probably got a new Mess in the Chesvo. That is not a functional errata. It's just an art errata and a flavor text errata, which is great. And I think that's they talked about why they really wanted to do that. And that's fantastic. But I like that. And I've seen that in other card games where the errata, as long as you're continually in their product space, they'll just give them to you free of charge attached to another product. That's a nice way to do it. But the thing is, if two players have different Mesna chess foes, it just becomes an alt art. It doesn't actually change how they're expecting the game to play. So I don't know if they talk about a rod exactly why they're against it, but um, yeah, functional rod was raised. We feel that's not an appropriate case for rod. While digital card games can easily change the functionality of their cards post-release, doing it in a physical game comes with problems around communicating changes to the wider player base and remembering those changes during games. It's cleaner and more accessible to simply ban the card in standard format. And that's like a pretty, you know, you might disagree with that and it's okay. They can do what they want to do on it. And I think that's fine. 
And I think the big thing here is that the learnings from a lot of these cards, and this goes all the way back to the FFG core set, sometimes there will be ideas that are almost perfect ideas, but turn out to be problematic ideas. And if for the health of the game, it's generally a better thing to just say, no, we're not going to do that right now. We're going to ban it for a while. We can maybe unban it in the future. But then in the near future or the late future, we'll print a card that does spiritually what this card should have done now with the foresight and more understanding going forward. So I think it's only a matter of time. And obviously we have a release coming. I don't think you're going to see very, very soon that we'll see a card that likes some of these cards. But again, going forward, knowing the ideas that we know now, that's great. You're going to want endurance back. I promise you. I wonder if a and modified card packs is a possible feature. I would be very surprised. And again, that's too also a thing, right? Like no signal, obviously volunteers. There's a lot of stuff for a lot of people to do. Balance, now they're now balancing both formats, making new cards, testing. Again, there's a lot going on. It's hard to also do this erratas and then reprints and all that other stuff. They're also already going back and redoing all the other cards and the new forms. Like it just doesn't seem like a big priority. Um, like I would be surprised if it was a priority to that team. It's something that I reckon they'd want to do, but it's probably the last on a long list of stuff. Astro was a really big FFG errata. I totally forgot about that errata. I don't think we proxies being legal errata could work well. It's still really hard, though, to communicate that change and make sure everyone's on board. Can't imagine a regular company doing that. It could be a popular NSG pack. I'd be all for the card pack idea. Singer says, I really don't think Drago had to go. I'd love to see boats stay too, but that's the harder to see a clear path. Yes. So let's talk about the cards one by one. Um, I think Drago is the one that I'm like, I understand why he went and I know a lot of people don't like it. I think when it came out and I was almost so close to smugly making a YouTube short, which is just the clip of me when it was just Sangren and I doing our Midnight Sun. What is this? Midnight Sun uh, release it was a tier list video. And I was like, there's no way this card's not getting banned. It's on tape. I said, there's no way this card's not getting banned. And we ended up here and I'm honestly not happy with myself. The balance makes me wonder how NSG playtesting compares to FFG. Wonder if that could be incentivized on their Patreon. I don't know what you mean by that optical, but if you want to get involved with playtesting, they're generally always looking for people, from my understanding. So do reach out. And there's a reboot project about just like entire errata format. Oh yeah, reboot's neat if you want to look at like ways you think rebalancing cards do stuff. Good point about the prioritization. I was just thinking about an ideal situation. Yeah, yeah. Ideal and functional are obviously two different things. Has 70% of Banby Please cards now been banned? Oh, that's such a good question, and we have to revisit it. But Ban Me Please cards so far has been Endurance, which was a Ban Me Please card after we came back to it. That's been banned. What else was a Ban Me Please, Jeff? I don't know what survived. I don't know, Jeff, if you know. 20 was a Ban Me Please, which I think is so far from it. And even in startup, it doesn't even make sense anymore. So I don't think you're seeing that much of that, let alone they printed other good multi access. So like I think that's fine. Um, so yeah, 20 was a bit overhype. Uh, I do think like pinhole threading and no free lunch could have been ban me please cards. I think they were readdressed much later on. They went from niche to like staples, which was a failure of the thing. Was wake in plan ban me please? Wow. Multi axis, huh? And that being said, I do think there's a big chance that those cards are also going to change in value based off of the bans. Because some of the best competitive lists going before this ban were like the sort of prison things where, again, trying to go out of your way to find the agendas and steal the agendas and get multi axis pressure was the wrong direction to go. A lot of those games, unfortunately, were like avoid the agendas for a really long time. I'm mostly speaking about NBN prison decks. So, yeah, I don't know. There's a chance that we can revalue some of that stuff at some point. But yeah, Drago was my like brand me, please. I just played a couple games against Drago early on. And it's like, wait, this is wild. All right, let's go through them. I'm trying to remember, we were quite stingy. Yeah, we were quite stingy. We were. If banning a card from time to time is a cost of experimenting with interesting, powerful cards, I'm okay with that. Piotr, I am totally agree with you. And that's a huge design fundamental. It seems, at least June, she's gone on tape to talk about this. If you want to listen to, again, the Shadownet podcasts, uh, and I think the Slums cast too, saying like if part, the whole, uh, what's it called, Borealis cycle comes out and the cards don't get banned, it means we're not trying so to do something interesting. So like, that's cool. That's cool. I'm into it. We totally watch a ranking follow-up for a second half of Parhelion. Yeah, I don't even think Jeff and I talked about doing that. We probably should at some point. Okay, let's start here. Let's have it. Let's start here. Drago got banned. Um, Drago's interesting. Uh, I guess we should just read what they say. Have you all read this? Maybe this is going to be boring. This is not the right article. Okay, that's fine. Uh, where is it? I closed it? How did I do that? Yeah, I've, I've used the computer before. You can, you can probably tell. Oh boy. All right. Give me the Drago. Okay. Likewise, Drago. Let me hide my face. 
was another difficult choice. While we knew we wanted to weaken the Reality Plus Prison decks, Hyperlink too. Who gets the call here? Sokka? Yeah, that's huge that they actually gave Sokka the link here. It's so easy to pull one of the recent ones, but that's the I think that's the thing you have to pull. That utilized it. Drago is also the centerpiece of the Urban Renewal op deck. This op deck is maybe the strongest horizontal deck in the current metagame, and banning Drago means this kill combo no longer exists. For what it's worth, the other op lists that we saw before um, this set released, uh, the latest set that we're now doing end of line stuff, I think are still worth looking at the Bridgman op decks. And I think they're probably still very, very cool. We had also seen some experimentation with seamless launch decks and Midnight Sun metagame trying to land a kill with an early boom. Neither of those archetypes are problematic. It's unfortunate they end up collateral damage to the week of Drago. So the big problem with Drago, if you ask me, is twofold. Either the fact that he is an infinite and ongoing threat is a bit unfair. It feels unfair. The idea is that Drago has given you a tag. And then next turn, you still have to go deal with the Drago or he'll give you another tag. Now, functionally, if you write this down and look at it abstractly, giving the runner a tag every turn with Drago is absurdly expensive to the point that that can't be a winning line. You're not seeing a lot of these other like decks put Drago in remote server and just advance it over, over and over again. The only one you are seeing is, of course, Reality Plus. And I thought to some extent Reality Plus might be addressed. This is a really strong identity, and I feel like I really do not like 40 card minimum corp decks. I wish they just didn't exist for other reasons. But I thought there was a chance that this would be addressed or Drago would be addressed because this is the one enabler that makes Drago as a constant prison threat financially feasible. You also end up in those games where, in short, if you don't haven't seen how this works, the idea is that every turn the corporation can do advance events, fire Drago, and then just get their credits back. So basically they have one functional click a turn to advance their board state. And while other cards have been banned in response to these decks, things like archive memories and the other recursion cards, so you can't just replay Drago, let alone replay the, the punishment. Um, yeah, they still work. <laughs> they still really, really, really work. Drago should trash itself after tagging the runner and be two to trash. Yeah, what do you want to do for an errata here? It's kind of up to you. I do think that Drago, I don't know what you want to do, right? Like, do you need to premeditate this thing so you have to res it some way like a, a daily quest? I doubt that makes sense. That's really hard to get that to work. Um, or does this have to trash itself after the turn it's used? The thing is, if this trashes itself after the turn it's used and it's single use, it's actually kind of comparable to a bunch of other really bad cards that no one has or really will play, right? Like, while we have CU, and CU is generally much more credit expensive to get done, uh, you also have uh, Fly on the Wall, which kind of works, but then this kind of has an impact on the cogency or the coherentness of your agenda suite. So there are abilities like that where install advance advance and theory threatens a tag. And I think that's probably how a lot of designers saw Drago, or maybe that's how Drago saw a lot of play originally that you did install advance advance. And then, uh, that was it. And like, so you did install advance advance and then next turn you like advance advanced and then did something, or you gave them a tag and capitalized on it. But the idea of this ongoing threat that just goes in remote server and over and over again is really quite difficult. Hey, Jessica, make it limit one per deck. How's it going, Jessica, by the way? I don't like limit one per deck as a design feature. I think it just makes the blowouts not, I think it makes the deck less consistent, obviously, and it makes it no longer the game plan, but it makes it more of a thing that that can do. But having powerful one ofs, I feel like I don't, I don't like that as a way to balance card games. Be like, oh, there's a busted powerful card potentially, but it's not consistently. So the games you lose to it, you can write off as like, oh, that was bad luck. They drew the Drago on turn one or whatever. And like, Obviously, maybe the deck is not consistent enough at that point where you can build like a Drago prison deck, but I'm not a big fan of it. If this card removed itself from a game when it got trashed anyway, rezzed or unrezzed, okay, cool. That becomes a fair bit more interesting. Like there's a bunch of things I think you could do to address this, but the problem was that sort of thing. Um, now when it's banned, the question is what happens? And I'm actually really fascinated for that. It turns out a lot of the NBN mid-range ice is actually still really good. So uh, you maybe are able to play something a bit more mid-range and go for it. Again, the UK Nationals list was kind of cool, and that wasn't a Drago Prison deck at all. It was just an NBN good ice deck, and that's kind of nice. But I also think that you're going to see less and less players play that like the ubiquitous package of the, what's it called, the pinhole threadings and the no-free lunches. I think you're still going to play Pinhole Threading. It's just kind of a slapper of a card. It's probably one of the best cards in the entire uh, cycle. Uh, but No Free Lunch is going to be less ubiquitous, which means other tag strategies, single tag strategies, actually got more teeth. And that's kind of cool, as admittedly as that there's not many single tag strategies that actually work. Though you're still going to see hard hitting news for sure. I think the other big thing, and, and Jeff called this out, is like tag me decks are alive and well. 
uh, the one big counter to decks like counter surveillance, and even in a meta with a lot of tag me stuff, you saw two counter surveillance hit the top, what was it, eight or top 16 at Worlds. Uh, these sort of decks lost so hard to like of cards, the likes of cards like Market Forces and the likes of cards of Self Growth Program. And without any of those cards being a very big part of the potential meta, these sort of tag me decks, Zaya, even maybe an Anarch possibly, can come back and they might just be like a feeding frenzy out there because there's no more, um, what's it, what was it called? High profile target. So it's actually hard to hate these decks out. I do think you might still see market forces in like controlling the message and those like horizontal tag decks, but um, on its own, like I feel like the kind of a slot has opened up for this deck to be a bit more consistent. I wonder if Drago would be okay with a forfeit and agenda res clause. I think it would be unplayable, but it'd be obviously less powerful, which that's intended goal, yeah. Single use, but you get one tag per two counters, so you still give multiple. Giving multiple tags cheaply is an issue because you just died a boom. Like it needs to be hard to give someone two tags just because two tags is a very different jumping point uh, in this game. I played some new startup games for the last time. It was a lot of fun. Yo, Jessica, startup's really good right now. It's really quite good. I'm glad you're getting into it. It's probably been a bit, huh? I just like the fact that Draga has no condition on his ability to shooting out tags feels cheap. It's not. It's cheap in Reality Plus. It's expensive in anything else. Drago is quite expensive. Is the fact that advancements can come from other than basic actions that make this so strong? Hey, reference. No, not really. Um... The Drago prison decks like this existed before people were doing like La Costa, let alone people don't really seamless launch unless they're playing combo decks. But like the only other way that this gets advancements is like La Costa. And uh, those were came up pretty later in the meta and they're OK. They're just like pseudo economy cards. Yeah. Yeah. Dragos really are plus problems. Exactly how I how I think about it. Um, Reality Plus makes this. Oh, uh, it makes it financially feasible to keep up paying your prison guards. And um, otherwise, it's a bit expensive. It's been a while. I played Endurance for the first time since very early testing. Anyways, yo, how'd you find it? What did you think when you played Endurance? Were you like, eight cost? That's too much. Did you think it was seemed exciting? It's really cool to hear people's thoughts of maybe the first time seeing cards. All right. Next one's Cabinessa Wu. This is the World Tree deck. So Cabinessa Wu did not get banned because Cabinessa Wu's ability inherently did anything wrong. It's just World Tree now exists. Our only deep net card. Uh, this thing costs six. It comes down. And if you're running, it allows you to trade cards for cards from your deck. And this is a card that I think was pretty high up on our on our tier lists when we did them. Um, but this deck was actually way more consistent than it looked. And a big part of this card is that if you're building a deck that has this as its main centerpiece engine, you're going to need to find this card consistently. And who can do that turn one besides Captain Esawu? Come on, Captain's ability is plainly inherently wrong. I don't think so. I don't think it is. I think you could change some of this text around. But I don't think it's inherently wrong. That being said, I think Kavanaugh's ability is ripe for the sort of exploitation to get her banned. I think the way that the designers, and again, I have no idea what intent is, but like there's a lot of support cards for Cabanessa that seem like really cool things you can do, right? Cabanessa Chameleon, oh, sick. Ca Cabanessa with like Euler and Gauss, oh, cool. I installed them the turn. I get some good value. Cabanessa with Flame Out chip whatever flame out awesome but then like every cabanessa woo deck that you see that is competitive is like cabanessa triple or revoir on turn one let alone like you know what's it called uh Rizeki, right like you're right i think exactly right who's been holding back program design is probably a really really big thing is that if there's anything that consistently if you can pull two or three of them an engine build that's like absolutely busted yeah she has a huge uh, design space squeeze no that is actually very very true like, I don't know, maybe y'all haven't been playing the game long enough, but Triple Au Revoir Cabanessa was like a really, really ridiculous rig that was clicking for three credits and jacking out uh, freely using other cards to support it. And no deck had an economy like that. And again, no deck could pull three Au Revoir consistently on turn one, but she could. So that's the thing. It's like people are not using Cabanessa Wu generally competitive to play to be like, oh, I'm going to find that missing piece and then watch it go into the, into the sunset. No, they were using her to get consistent, ridiculous engines. And so why play her? As opposed to anything else. Thanks for your sacrifice, Captain. <laughs> so saving the tree will be forever remembered. Yeah, so the thing about World Tree, right? And like you can go to that Stimhack article that uh Eric wrote up talking about like how this is the worst netrunner. Not this one. This is just cool wine. Uh World Tree. The question is like, is World Tree good? And then the question for two reasons is Shaper still playable? I don't know. Surfer Land Baby, ah, Rogi. Both of those cards shouldn't have existed. It's okay, we can all go back to the best air play stack, Neuro Spike Kill. There's some really good, uh, what's it called, uh, re-education kill decks right now. I think they're really good. We're all Dao now. 
Like this definitely is the card where I pretty strongly disagree with SBT, but I understand why they did it. I think your tone, Jeff, I've already said that has been like very good that you can disagree and still be like respectful enough. And yeah, no, it's good. It's a good video. Check it out. I got, it got retribution. Oh, Jessica's talking about the endurance and it didn't matter because I had the new shaper strength booster and the broken breakers. So just one anyways, Hey, get them. As much as the ban list kills Shaper, do you think that they may make the faction stronger in the future by allowing more wild programs that Wu doesn't break? I think it is impossible to make Shaper better. I think as soon as Shaper is any good, everyone gets really upset. That's it. You can't play good Shaper cards because you're going to upset a lot of people. There's no way around it. And I think there's some like base problems with that is like Shaper. Generally, a lot of people look at Shaper and think it represents that sort of like camping control deck that just like goes into the remote server all constantly and just sits back with their grinding economy and they just tower over you until you've lost on turn seven because you haven't gone fast enough. Um, and then when they make an aggressive mid range card like Endurance, we all lose our minds because like I'm only slightly joking, but I think Shaper is really hard to design for. I think the sort of like elegant tricks and kind of like kick flips and we people haven't said the term shaper bullshit in a really long time. That is the wild thing. Whenever we used to like do competitive casting for, for Netrunner, the term shaper BS was the common term to see shapers do something ridiculous, intricate at instant times, knowing the whole chart of all the paid ability windows. And for what it's worth, that hasn't happened in a while anymore. I'm not saying that's bad. Um, actually, it's probably good. But like Shaper is much different than it was. And I think we're seeing good design changes of how Shaper looks like. Ugh, hold on. This is a bit of a, a mixed message. World Trade being able to tutor any type of card seems absurd. It's from all can tutor events. <laughs> so hear me out. It's really difficult. Um, I think Shaper still has a bunch of cards that scale really, really well into the late game. Um, Shaper cards recently from the Null Signal games era are getting a bit more consistent and they're kind of getting on par with some other decks. Cards like Creative Commission, uh, Dr. Nuka, these are just kind of like baseline good cards that don't force you into that sort of late game advantage that Shaper really swung into. But I do think inherently like Shaper falls into the same path of HB where so much of their like ethos is based about efficiency, raw efficiency classically. And a lot of that isn't very flashy. And then if it's good, it's usually really good. And if it's not good, it's unplayable because it's not very interesting. Um, I think HB feels in the same way. And I don't know if y'all know, HB is one world's like literally next to every year, if not almost every year. And it's just a hard thing to balance when the identity is just about like doing the thing good when like competitive Netrunner is generally about click compression and efficiency. Now, obviously like anarch economies, there's other things that make that a bit more uh, nuanced, but um, or they've been a bit better than that, but it's really hard. I don't know. It's hard. Everyone complains, no matter what. But I do think Shaper is the one faction that when it's good, people like the game less. And I think this the best thing about the sinking of the endurance is there's going to be so many players who are like hardcore Shaper players who can now like feel really good that they're playing their hipster deck. World Tree feels like Shaper bullshit. It kind of does, but it's it's like for what it's worth, World Tree is a really fun deck game. It's like a really fun card. It allows you to do that Shaper sort of nonsense. It's less like kick flippy, but you're making good decisions. Uh, it's hard to play on paper, but like the question is, can you play World Tree? We kind of talked about this earlier on the stream. It was asked, can you play World Tree out of someone else? And I think you can maybe consider playing it in Isla, but then it's still really difficult because then you still need to feed it stuff and you don't have that woo to get stuff from your deck to feed it at like, you know, on call. So it's definitely going to be worse. It's maybe going to be a bit better than it looks, but I don't think it's going to be great. I think woo may fly flame out World Tree qualifies as Shaper BS. It's like on the edge. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. Being playing Netrunner for the last six months and been, sorry, they moved. I've been teaching my coworkers our office went from two to nine players. I'm constantly amazed at how good the null signal gateway is on boarding. It's cool seeing what runner types that people enjoy. System gateway, this cannot be like sung enough, is such a good new player experience. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Efficiency being tied to more than one faction on each side feels like a big misstep in design because it's like a main goal of the game. There's an interesting decision on our discussion on Arkham Horror, on Reddit Arkham Horror, talking about like, if you could redesign the Shaper faction, what would you do? And I'm not saying this is it, but people were talking about like how Seeker, which is generally the most overpowered faction, generally all their cards are above curve. And if you ask me why, it's because the thing they do find clues is hella boring. It's really boring to be like, I'm going to pick up this thing. I'm going to pick up this thing. Well, all the other characters are using like guns and magic to like shoot frog creatures out of the sky. And they're like, oh, I'm going to look under this desk. Like, so a lot of the cards are a bit undertuned. They have really good movement, really good card draw. And like, I wouldn't say Shaper is that. Uh, but again, when good, good shaper cards come out, I think the reason why I brought this up is about having card draw to be like your faction thing. I think shaper card draw is really good right now. And the problem is like, that's really hard to print good cards in a faction that has really good card draw. Sometimes, I guess. I don't think that's a problem right now. Whatever. 
Is World Tree fun in person? Yes, it's intimidating. Haven't tried it, but seems miserable. Can't imagine playing at a full day tournament. I would not play at a full day tournament unless you're like really, really uh, like you have the reps in it. Because the easiest thing of playing things like Op and World Tree is that when you trash a card, it shows you a drop down list of all your legal options as opposed to having to like, you know, physically leaf through a deck of up to 80 cards. I'm waiting for a side cipher near print. Yeah, you and me both. So is Apex. I don't know how much to say about this. Um, you can still play it. And I'm glad that this is still part of the game because this is one of the coolest cards that's been designed. Um, I still think it's absurdly powerful, but I've also only played it with side cabin SOO, so who knows? There was actually something that brought up, was brought up in the interview on the old shadow net that I listened to today, where June said there's actually a lot of design ideas that hit the floor uh, because there's like, physically it's hard to do. <laughs> like they're too fiddly. Like having a card that makes you shuffle your deck every turn is kind of on the edge of that. Uh, like Mumbet City Hall, if you play back in the day, uh, June said that wouldn't fly. Modernly, no signal. Again, I don't know if the argument for World Tree has changed that, but having a, a like just the actual physical mechanics, not gameplay mechanics of it, are on the verge of being a problem. I physically can't shuffle my deck enough to play World Tree. Yeah, no, for real. Like some people literally also, some people like literally cannot shuffle their deck enough uh, in time. All right, endurance is gone. The monkey's paw curls. It is the beginning of people playing the meanest face check ice that you can no longer face check anymore. People are going to be sandberging you. People are going to be half run staff comboing you and you're all happy now. <laughs> we do not know what we become. You have to find the appropriate breaker in Anarch. You have to find it. Yeah, that's right. How many black orcs are you running into their triple magnet deck? Go find them. Uh, Endurance is gone. That's probably good. Probably good. This card's really good. Um, it's just slightly too good. I think a card like this could exist. Uh, I feel like you have to just change the numbers on this thing. I think if this thing was like two power counters for one subroutine, it's on the verge of being okay to good. Probably good to fine. I think that would fix it. Like, I, I think it's very small changes this card. And this card probably went through so much testing because its ability is absolutely buck wild. Um, but yeah, it is. Uh, now you're going to see different factions actually play different consoles. I think that opens it up. The big question is like what shape you're going to do because they were the faction that was very, very consistently playing three of these. I don't know. I think Shaper's economy is still pretty okay. You have to build an engine, but now that early to mid game where the endurance kind of just sailed you through all your obstacles, you're going to figure out something else. What are you going to be doing? Are you going to be playing N'Golo for 3,000 credits? I don't know. Maybe. I don't love N'Golo. I was never an N'Golo believer. I'm still to this date not an N'Golo believer, but it's obviously good enough. Instead of plus two MU, when you say you have two MU lol, <laughs> honestly, negative MU is like a, something they haven't like interacted with. And like, it's so easy to understate that this is such a good thing. This opens up so many possibilities. I'm a huge believer that MU, we should just have more MU. We should just have more MU. I'm aware that having four MU makes you like want to Im import MU cards and makes decisions. But I feel like so much of the play pool is just not interacted with because MU concerns. Because you need your three breakers. Then you need your fermenter. Little heaven forbid a Stargate. Like I feel like MU just restricts the amount of the card pool that sees play. So often I'll be like, are you playing Enga? Nah, I'll just play Time Bomb. I have MU issues. Like, I don't know. And again, having infinite MU would probably be an issue on its own, but like having two MU is so nice. It's so nice, especially for like criminal that never has plus two MU. It's the only plus two MU console in startup, and it makes me sad. Um Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But it's still legal in startup. You can still play it. There's no bans in startup. You can't spell endurance at the end <laughs> or ran. I feel like even just started starting on one or two counters instead of three, maybe enough. Yeah, there's so many ways you could like in theory work on this or say that you can only use it once a turn. Like there's things you can do that would actually make this balanced. Unfortunately, they're all functional errata. I don't know if we'll see a uh, boat at some point in the future. I like propellers, a shaper card, limited use, cheap. Would like to see support for tutoring, limited tools and selling them for something else, but not tied to World Tree. Yeah, it's Aesop's Pawn Shop, Thanos. We have it, but like propeller is a very, very good thing. Uh, sorry, propeller is exactly um the sort of card that like Cabanus abstractly wants to play, but doesn't. In sign, hindsight, endurance could not ignore strength and be okay. Like X counters break X subs on its ice strength X or less and give it a counter every run. Yeah, like this could have strength and then it could like interface, but at that point, hardware doesn't do that, so then the rules fall apart. But yeah, there's things you could do. Excuse me, the gauntlet, Jessica. No one's playing the gauntlet. You also had Boxy, for what it's worth, if we want to be like that. But, uh, <laughs> yes, yes. It's just like, come on, come on out. I'm glad you brought the gauntlet. But sometimes I don't want to play eight credits for two MU when I'm in Janktown. Yeah, you don't. You don't. I don't know. Two MU is sick. Maybe emphasizing Shaper's ability to build rigs quickly and efficiently instead of making their endgame rig their borderline non-interactive Doom machine would be cool. And this is sort of the issue, too. 
And I'll show you the deck list I've been working on because we're going to publish two videos in the next week or so. I really think Endurance wouldn't have made uh, through testing with such significant changes if aged a lot of credits weren't so entrenched to players' views. This was at some point was 10 credits. It's worth noting. It's just eight is like exactly where you'd expect it to be because you're used to playing security nexus. So who knows? But hey, they printed Orca. So this is the thing. If people are asking like, well, now what you're doing without endurance, what, what else do you do? So there's a chance that Shaper is still just going to build a Doom Rig that's going to feel less interactive and less fun. Right, it's the sort of Doom Rig that you might see in Startup to some extent, where you play like all the fixed strength breakers, Buzzsaw, Cleaver, and then maybe Mimic. I don't think you have to. And then you play K2CP Turbine. And then you break every ice that's five strength or less for pennies. Is that more fun and interactive? I don't know. But the big thing is like, how consistently can you set this up? I'll spoil a bit of the video. We're gonna put a small video about this, but I tried to put that engine in. Uh, it's just like a good stuff Hoshiko deck, right? Like we have a bit of the breakers. We have the K2CB turbine. We have boomerang to get you again. Boomerang is now very playable considering you don't have endurance anymore, uh, but that's it. Gonna disagree with you there, just that's the one. Um, and that's the idea. Turns out this is really bad. And I think a big part of why this was so bad, you see in so many of the games I play, we never get close to installing half of this stuff is because we can't find it consistently and it's really expensive to get it together. Now, I think Shaper can change that because Shaper has the consistency of pulling things from their deck. Uh, I think things like frantic coding, if you're playing a K2CB turbine engine deck might make sense in Anarch. If that's the case though, you're probably gonna still play the bin breakers and on its own, like paperclip with two turbine is fine. I don't think you need to play cleaver, but there's gonna be some issues there anyways. <laughs> Boomerang went away and came back. Can we do Nefer, Cradle and Mimic? I feel like Nefer is not better than paperclip because it's good to program destruction. You generally pay the same amount of credits. Uh, Cradle's not great because Buzzsaw is just better and Mimic is fine. I don't think Cradle is that much better than than Buzz Up. Buzz is really good. Eight is comparatively not a lot. Paperclip comes down. Yeah, eight is not a lot of money, but eight for a single card is a lot. But functionally, how much you're spending to break ice, eight credits is a steal. Do you have a contract form if I want to ask you questions about stream setup? Uh, River, metropolgrid at gmail.com. You can send me an email. Um, I'll get back to it. Never quick enough, but you can try that. If you could free one corp and one runner card ridden from the ban list, what would you pick? Oh, I'd have to look at the whole ban list. That's a hard one, Optical. Uh, I think I've been on, on, on video saying 24 seven, but I disagree with that immediately. So I don't know. I'd have to look at it. That's a hard one. Um, anyways, this is bad. Turns out this is not good. And I do think that if you end up in a meta where like breaking ice is super important, like you're going to end up into this point where like, this is the best thing to do. Like if every breaker is on every runner is on K2CB turbine, all the fixed strength breakers are breaking ice for pennies. It's just on the corporations to make sure you're never getting to that point, And they aren't. So in standard, I don't think this is worth doing for what it's worth. Um, who publishes? I think lost geek published a list recently where they did that. They're like, let's play Anarch. Let's play Hoshika without, um, without endurance. Let me see if we can find it. And it uh, looked kind of similar to that. I think it was, was it, was, was it, was it, was it? Oh, and also Null. No, you generally don't play Null. I should just search Lost Geek. Oh, here we, this will be easy. But yeah, it was kind of a similar looking list. And uh, obviously that was at a time where you could play Endurance. And uh, I don't know. It's just really hard to get it all together. Uh, let's assume we capsized. Hey, name of the stream too, right? So that's the same idea, but Galter, the package, K2CB Turbine. Uh, this has three Gatchapon, which I think is super important to make sure you get your breakers down because they're not bin breakers. And like, this did good, fourth of Swiss Nats. That's probably good. I don't know how many people play a Swiss Nats, but yeah, that's nice. But yeah, I don't know. It feels so much worse. And I feel like there's so many matchups where we're not installing this entire Doom Rig. Now, more excitingly, is that the next video is just going to be this. I'm going to have to find a good name for this. If you have a good suggestion, please let me know. But then I just decided to play like Disruption. Uh, we play two Angas and then we just play the bin breakers and then like three hippo and Nuka and we played Atlas and I had so much fun today. This deck was so much fun. Like I was trying to figure out, okay, we lost the plot a bit, but Hoshiko is really good because it's consistent free card draw. So I went out my way to play too much card draw on Alice because you already don't have a card draw ability, let alone 50 cards. Um, but this felt really, really good. And we have some really good gameplay captured from this, but like we just kind of went back to how Anarchs played before Endurance and it's fine. It's honestly, genuinely fine. It's, th it's still good. It's still good. Just build an old deck. You don't have to do any, don't, you don't have, don't do this. You don't have to do this. There's no reason to do this. The problems being presented to you are not, can you break a code gate for three credits as opposed to one credit? They're not. They're like, can you disrupt somebody reasonably and pressure them and play pinhole threading, play pinhole threading. Don't play this. Well, I tried it. It never worked, but pinhole threading would have been so good in every game we played. 
Anyways. Uh, yeah, endurance is is gone. Um, what does that mean for the corp? I think that's actually the more interesting thing. What it means for corp, because now runners are actually going to have to get their breakers together, and they can't deal with some of the bigger ice as fast as they could classically. So things like the deck list of the week, as of uh, what was it two weeks ago, the silly modernism deck. This is really good. This seems really quite good, right? The idea is that we have bulwarks. Who deals with this easily? Endurance. You can ugly boomerang it. Who deals with trebuchet early? Or easily boomerang that's it inside job that's it that's all that it is i do think uh what's his name um uh banhar is really good the net damage or sorry the take the the damage net damage yeah the net damage and our connection that forces you to run i think that's totally worth looking at i think that's actually one of the most unfair thing anarchs can do modernly uh but yeah the lists like this i think are really quite good also if endurance doesn't seem consistent play i think there's a chance you might see less shaper now, again, someone who will solve the Shaper problem, find a good Shaper engine that works. The Shaper cards are inherently pretty good, but Endurance was a big reason why Shaper was seeing competitive play for the last little while. And if people aren't playing Endurance or are not playing Shaper specifically, that means that they have to spend more time drawing, it slows them down inherently, and then they also don't play Misdirection, which means having an angle of attack like Hard Hitting News is probably relevant and pretty good. Endurance also was a good card against like horizontal decks inherently, and Shaper is pretty good, I guess, finding a Parisha. They're not the best against assets. They's not bad though. Um, so yeah, it, it's just the fact that people can't jam an Endurance turn one. If you want to play any sort of rush deck, you're actually in a really good spot. Otherwise, uh, having a, like having to actually break some of this ice, like on cell 1.0, you didn't see a lot of it uh, in a while. Uh, that stuff gets a fair bit better. Again, less shaper, less clot. There's a lot of like knock on effects from this. So it depends. I think some of the criminal decks are largely the same. Some of the criminal decks that were doing well into like the, the reality plus decks you saw at like UK Nationals are probably very similar. They weren't playing endurance at some point that actually got hated out of the meta. And I think those are probably pretty fine. And they actually get some more card slots because those decks were playing, you know, mad dashes, which are probably still worth playing regardless of the meta. But they were also playing like three copies of No Free Lunch and like two Citadel Sanctuaries. Now, if you're not doing the tag me stuff, which some of them were doing a bit of that, you can still uh just get some slots back and kind of do whatever the heck you want just build for the meta that you want to i'm interested to see if twinning smoke does well the deck still seems good especially with no drago yeah i think the smoke decks like eventually ended up on endurance i think they were the one of the last like the holdovers or the last resistance to playing endurance but the smoke decks are probably fine it's more so to figure out what the other side of the table is doing because smoke while smoke is generally good at breaking ice really cheaply smoke is actually a fair bit more flexible than i think smoke looks at a distance because her ability inherently is just kind of like getting money or a card draw for free while running that's never bad bones are back on the menu yeah i think bones are pretty good on the menu uh, just to show you a bit of my history, like just playing uh, standard um, for the last couple of days, uh, we can just look through my history and I don't think it's representative uh, and you'll see some of these matches. So that was today, but we played against Asa twice with Arteza. Those are really fun games. We played against some PE and I'm figuring out I'm hating playing against PE. I just don't like playing against PE anymore. I feel like I've just been, I don't know. I got the brain worms. I play against PE on, on JNet. I'm just like, I don't want to do this anymore. And I just play as aggressively as possible. It's maybe disrespectful for my opponent, but I have no interest in playing against PE. And it doesn't even matter if it's a fair or unfair quote unquote PE. I just don't want to do it anymore. What's happened to me? I'm trying to figure out why that is. But if someone queues up with PE against me on online, I'm just like, great. I'm just going to go ham. I don't know. I just don't care. It's not a good look. We played against Op. We played against Asas. We played against Asmaris, which was a bit of a prison. Uh, we played against a bunch of near-earth hub decks. We played against the Outfit, Builder Nations. This is a fun matchup. Sports Metal. Like, we're actually seeing a lot. And some of it is like Ice is Good stuff. Some of it is, again, Asas Bam Harding News. Some of it's just like fast Wayland Rush. Like, you're seeing a pretty diverse field. But... All of them had really mean tricks where like having endurance would make it better, but they were already relatively good against endurance, I reckon. Playing against PE, but don't get to do your plan since the plan is now life points, so it gets samey. I think that's the biggest thing. It's like in PE, the random accesses on centrals are so important that it's like very stressful and requires a lot of focus. Like generally, if you run HQ and you see like a card in Asa group, you're like, okay, whatever. It's an agenda. It's not an agenda. I'll learn something. I'll play around it. But the difference between hitting a sting or a snare is life or is like obviously the whole difference of the whole game. And obviously variance in a card game. I'm not complaining about that, but that becomes very, very stressful. And that becomes requires a lot more energy than I just kind of want to do if I'm playing casually, unfortunately. But I think that's the biggest thing too, is that so much of my deck becomes unplayable and just becomes hit points. And generally when I'm filming a video and recording, I want to show you what my deck can do. Not about how can someone can play as few cards as possible uh and then like run on jinteki so like i think that's a really big thing about it um that is the pe games don't make good footage and then i feel like i'm wasting my time because i don't enjoy playing against pe 
on that note, uh, Jinsei won an event with PE, and like this sort of thing, I think is like way more powerful than it looks. And one of the big things is that nobody in the format deals with Nancy anymore. Literally, no one in the format can break a Nancy for reasonable. Besides, again, like a Mimic plus uh, what's it called, K2CP Turbine. But like outside of Stealth, maybe nobody's breaking a Nancy well. And so like just putting like 11 sentries, like this was a good uh, ice suite going into an endurance meta. If you look at like Bridgman, Jintekia Worlds, this is still a really good ice suite. Like no one's dealing with this well. No one is. Like what are you doing? Numb and 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 uh, poison? Oh, I don't know. And I don't like playing against that. It's absolute grind of a deck. Hey, Steve Bernard, I really like Isawak. It's been fun. I'm not a big Isawak fan. Um... But yeah, no, I, I think also playing online traps is like a different thing than playing them in person too. Hush, let it fire. <laughs> Those are good subroutines, but yeah, Hush kind of helps the, the the sting a bit. Not the actual sting, the sting. When will they ban PE to free up Jinteki design space to allow things like Isawa Kyobu? I think it's just not that they'll ban it. They just won't reprint it because PE is part of system update. I think at some point PE won't exist. Orca K2CP lol. <laughs> I guess you have to even K2CP it, right? Seabass, what's up? There are a couple of decks like that in Ashes right now. Just nope out of the matchups. Oh, like Ashes, the uh, the card game. Nice. What a crime that PE was a sis up over RP. I agree, but I think PE represented this sort of, you know, thing that was very integral to so many players who learned Runner back in the day. But I just feel like PE right now is just, there's just way too much inevitability from the damage uh, as opposed to like maybe what it was back in the day where you took some damage. But like, I don't know. I'm not, I don't like PE anymore. Uh, Nana Civic got banned. Uh, yeah, it was a Canadian card, so it's just about time that they kill all of them. Um, this is a really good card. We turned out to be like very, very powerful on the way that I can protect archives indefinitely. Uh, the archives face down identity, which is also what that deck we were just looking at does, is pretty, pretty good. It's pretty good. I guess that deck does it to some extent. But the fact that this card either was not unique or didn't say remote server only means that one was on the on their archives and you can never flip ice, and then the other was on the scoring remote. And Ag Infusion made that an absolute nightmare. So this is probably a card that could get some amount of Radas. Uh, this is a very, very, very scary card. Uh, and the fact that it can just get an end the run, little on the way it works with Ag Infusion. And any card that supports Ag Infusion inherently should be a bit reconsidered. Obo is the card holding back Jinteki Design Space. I think all 5-3's got to go. I'm at the point where I think 5-3 should not exist in Neverland anymore. Again, I don't know what's happened to me, but I'm convincing myself that this game would be so much better without 5-3 agendas. And I don't think I'm wrong. Instead of PE, they should have printed Mati and Sissa, only mostly joking. Honestly, like, in a world where the ice isn't, like, a Nazi level, Mati Mukundo is kind of really cool. It's way better than anything else you can do, uh, but it's actually, like, I know I said this before in the video where we talked about bands. If you were playing against or as Mati, against a runner deck of same or equal competitive caliber, it is the most fun netrunner you can play. It is the most fun ever. That being said, Matisse's inherent ability to be like, haha, you ran my remote server, Anansi. Ha ha, you ran border control, right? Like, if your deck wasn't competitive, you don't win that game. And it's not even come close to that game. You just can't run anymore. Uh, so that's a, kind of messed up. But uh, it's really fun if you're like ready for it and you know what you're getting into. The Matisse is so fun. City Works and Hollywood Renovation should be the only legal 5 threes. <laughs> Build back up that uh, SSO deck, huh? Is it SSO? What is that thing called? Is it, it's been so long. SSO, yeah, of course it is. I know, Jessica. I love playing with T. It's just not compatible with the card pool. Yeah, it probably isn't. Um, Border Control. So Border Control was released after Mati, and Mati was banned shortly after that, but like the consideration to ban Mati was before Border Control. Uh, to some extent. That might actually be in a couple months, but it wasn't like a year, I don't think. Don't quote me. I think an errata Mati that isn't total misery with Managar Manoetic would work. Oh, yeah, because that also works so poorly. Oh, you're so right. Yeah, it's approaches. I forgot the timing on this thing. Yeah, if this was like when they passed the last dice or some timing like that. Otherwise, yeah, they hit the Anoetic and or the Managarm. They pay and then you Mati them. Yeah, that's that's it's a uh, form of carry all over again, but worse. I won a game with SSO and the other day. I had to go fast. Man, SSO has no support. SSO is also an identity that, like I love playing, but it's also an identity that's like so feast or famine and I don't think it's good for the game. It's like this sort of thing where like SSO is one of the big things like, oh, are, do you not like Boomerang, Bonchus, Endurance? You can't print uh, if If you don't like those, SSO is going to be good. Because the first agenda, if you can't stop it, okay. That's the ban list. What do I think it's going to do? I don't know. I honestly have no idea. I think every faction has something they can do. I think Shaper is interesting um, because your Endurance is gone. So figuring out what the Shaper console slot is, 
who knows the classically shaper consoles aren't very good so you'll import something maybe uh but i think the shaper economy is better than it's ever been we got really good fundamental cards so just figuring out how to like int intelligently use your influence and this is something i had forgotten that was like really nice to re-listen to in uh i think this was an article actually no this was a tweet from june again the lead designer on uh, nl signal netrunner saying that one thing they wanted to readdress uh when designing netrunner going forward is that they didn't want factions to have like huge holes in their identity where it's just like one faction doesn't have card draw one faction just doesn't have this one card faction doesn't have this uh but instead every faction can do everything to some quality and then how you're using your influence is more about uh expression and creativity and i think like that's a really cool part about shaper right now is that shaper fundamentally now has like creative commission nuka like they have fundamental pieces not that you were slapping or importing that sort of stuff but then the idea is like how do you spend your influence i think right now in netrunner deck building your use of influence is so interesting and so potent there are so many very splashy build around cards that are medium to high influence that are going to define the decks i still think you're gonna see anarch decks that are like 60 to 70 percent the same cards that's something that needs to be addressed but then like that last influence spend i think that's going to like make the really interesting stuff in the modern meta the influence decisions right now are really cool. I'm, I, I'm such a big fan. And while we're still going to see, like, I think two pinholes or at least in every deck, you might see less no free lunches. So as a whole, every non-criminal also got more influence going forward. Maybe, maybe you still need. But I think if you're worrying about tags, you don't play no free. You play like no one home or something like that. Five times three is influence of the boat. Yeah, I know that. And I've seen that one before. The only reason I accept Matisse unbanning is that I don't have to play against Janktivist and Matisse deck anymore. Man's a monster. I don't know if Janktivist can hear that, but... Every time I look at Matisse, I read the first couple words and my eyes glaze over. It's too much text. There's a fair bit of text on it. It's actually secretly a Doomtown card. Had the same experience on my Jaina the other day. Just got back from my local meetup. Essa wrecked my super modernism tonight. So the front page lobby of JNet is like generally not a place you want to hang out or read. It's like the worst part of Netrunner. <laughs> Like if someone had to say, what's the worst part of Netrunner? Like, oh, is it endurance? No, it's the JNet front lobby. It's awful, surprisingly awful. Um, it's weird how that is, isn't it? Uh, but yeah, a lot of people not happy about Essa over there. And like, Essa's good ish sometimes. Um, I'm not gonna be the say skill issue because I lose to Essa too, and it's a really bad way to upset people. But like, you can choose how to sabotage, and it's it's way different than noise because you can actually like you know play around it. It's not just random off the top. Like, no, he sucked. Essa, you have some options. That being said, somebody's just lose to Essa, right? Does Matisse or Op have more rules text? Uh, Op. Matisse is pretty straightforward. Op actually has like timing interactions that are super relevant. It's going to, uh, I was also good to say skill issue, especially when it isn't. No, Essa, like, sabotage is skill issue. Not always. It's it's hard for a good Essa to make a not skill issue, but understanding how to use your spin doctors, understanding when to draw, what to sabotage from hand for the top of the deck is skill. 100%, there's so much more skill in sabotage, undeniably, than against noise. Uh, aggressive, uh, get good. Skill issue is get good too. It just sounds better. What would the Jinteki version of AWP look like? Oh man, I was forgetting... So I was trying to do some design stuff back in the day, design a set. And I think the one thing that I wanted to do, but then it turned out to be bad for a bunch of reasons, but I was fascinated about the idea of Jinteki installing things that weren't, I, uh, weren't assets or agendas in servers. So the idea is that like you can install ice in a server, not in front of a server, in a server. And if the runner axes it, they encounter it. Um, but then it gets trashed, something like that. Um, Obviously, you have to do more about that, but I think that's like the closest. It wouldn't be op exactly, um, but that's sort of like tricks about like, oh, there's an extra layer of defenses at the end. Surprise. Um, that's kind of cool and fun. That being said, like the economy, the whole game falls apart <laughs> to some extent, but whatever. Uh, I don't know. All ice is a sapper. Yeah, all ice is always a sapper. All ice is a chrysalis or whatever. How are we doing on time? It's 10.51. We could probably play a game. Uh, this is one thing I want to do just because like, you know, we avoid playing Netrunner. Uh, somebody put out, this is from Wag Shadow Xylus, put out their own like custom set. It's called Bootstraps and it's like a full 55 cards. Uh, art is all uh, mid journey. And like, I've looked through it a bit. If we want to talk to this weekend, it's always so fun to see new cards, but I feel like we won't play Netrunner tonight. And that's probably a bit of a bummer. So hey, you let me know what you think. Otherwise, we're just going to try some standard deck. I'm going to sit here and drink my water while chat delay catches up. Oh, he was a thirsty boy.
I thought Nanny was a version of off. Pull a face down from archives and play it. That's actually kind of true, huh? Cards, 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 new cards. Let's run the nets. If APOC of a viable discuss, I think APOC is always viable. The question is to see what corpse are doing. If corpse are playing assets, obviously APOC is viable. I've been playing it to Sandberg decks. So like, yeah, APOC it, please. Um, Endurance was not really something you wanted to play in APOC that often. Actually, that's not true. Worlds obviously did that. Um, I think it's probably good, but it depends on what corporations are playing. If less people are playing Ag Infusion and like Nana Civic, obviously it's um it's a uh, it's its own thing, right? Like that means it's harder to APOC. Okay. I think we're gonna play some games. It's been a minute, we've been talking for a while. I think we can come back to this next week or we'll do something else. But T did feel a lot like Ob feels now. Fun to play powerful ability and strong, but beatable by runners who have knowledge of those decks. Yeah, that being said, like op is relatively fair. The fact that like we're gonna not see someone on potentially turn one without committing to it is a bit different. But I know I hear you. I hear you. It's like it felt kind of I like op. I do like op as more about that sort of like shape your creativity. Um, and then you do have combo tricks. Uh, Mati was more about like surprise, which I don't think op feels like surprise. I think op. Ah, uh, I don't know. Maybe half run decks do. What are we building? I haven't built corp in a bit. In standard, is there anything that we we're really excited for that doesn't play endurance? I have just been playing so much startup more lately, but hey, we played some really good standard. I think that Alice deck is actually like really fun, as uninteresting as it is. It's just like good stuff and then like a bit of disruption. What can we play in standard? Nah, let's do court. We played running today. Play tag me Zaya. Yeah, F it. Let's play Tag Mizaya. That's really easy. You just go deckless. You hit search. And then you either find Eric's or you find Austin's. So we'll do counter surveillance. Neurospike something. I'm not so I think re-education is really good. Uh I just don't think it's fun. And I don't think the winds feel good. It's just like, oh you die. Oh, you dead. All right, White Blades, Austin's, how different are we? If we just cycle the tabs. Okay, hold on. We have to match the zoom. Okay, so this one has Sneak Door Beta, which is, I think, correct. Uh, this one has Lucky Charm, which I think is correct. Uh oh, it gets a bit more nuanced. I think the card for card, they're the same. Izzy, they're almost. And sorry, I didn't mention your name in the list of Tag Me decks. Did you, I don't, did you publish yourself? No, no, okay. So this one has... A lucky charm. This one has three, two, three, three, two. If you squint, it becomes 3D. Oh, of course, Austin says embezzle and Eric's doesn't have embezzle. That makes a lot of sense. There's a compare list button. What? Wait, what? Since when? What is this? Is it going to just say this one's better? <laughs> oh, what? Come on. Two embezzle sneak door beta. That seems like not Eric's. That would be my guess. Yes. And this would be Amakua one of. Wait, Austin's on Amakua. Lucky Charm Bravado. I'm going to do embezzle sneak door. Like, there's no question to it. That's a sick kind of feature. I actually think this is probably is. There's a chance that we didn't stream the week that this was the deckless of the week, but I, there's a, actually a big chance that this is already. Yeah, 100% win rate. Undefeated on Jaina. So, yeah, we actually can just import that. Cross your eyes, you can spot the differences. I was trying really hard, but the problem is it was very bright. Runner, standard, this. Uh, yep, create that. Oh, shit. Functionally, we're going to have to scroll for... Oh, not actually that long. Oh, bye. That's really cool. The feature? Yeah, it is kind of cool. I've never used it. I honestly don't know a good use case for it besides like you basically like compare your deck to a competitive standard deck and you're like, okay, you see the difference? You're running like the two pet cards, the two pet cards, and then you're not running enough economy and then you just swap it out. The game about hacking is all the best community programmer support. A real talk. Obviously it does. The Arkham cards app. If you play Arkham Horror and you don't know what the Arkham Cards app is, you are shortchanging yourself in a way that once you find out what it is, you'll wish you could redo everything. It is so unbelievably good. It is unbelievably good, the Arkham Cards app. If you know, you know.
I've used it to swap cards between my decks when they were sharing. Oh, cool. Oh, to be like, I have a single collection. What should be in here? What should be out of here? Oh, that's neat. Casual. Why are people playing casual? Because of the new ban list? So this is a really nice ban list in theory because it's only bans. Whenever there's bans plus additions, it gets really awkward on JNet because then like your deck suddenly becomes illegal because you're playing cards that used to be banned that aren't banned. Obviously, unbanning cards makes the card pool better. We love that. But this is really convenient because we're assuming we're going to run into someone with that with thing. What is it? Campaign tracking? Frisbee, you don't know? So it is not only campaign tracking, but it connects to ArkhamDB so it has all your apps. And it basically does all the text. Like it'll be like all your resolutions, everything is in there. It'll just read through it. It'll only show you the options that are relevant. It'll show you shut up, it'll sh set up. It'll show you what's in the chaos bag. It is so good. And then when you add cards, take trauma, get XP, it updates automatically from Arkham DB. It is absolutely mind blowing. And if you donate to their Patreon, I'm pretty sure um, the people who make it, uh, there's also like narrated voice. If you are someone who doesn't want to or can't read, which is really cool. I, I don't pay for that feature though. Cause I'm the one who reads in my group and I don't want to give, I don't want to lose my job. <laughs> hey, thanks you too. All right, outfit. So we ran into one of the matchups that is very likely to want to hurt us dead. Uh, for that case, we basically want to get our hand size up to seven and then get Obelisk down. Obelisk is a console that gives us additional hand size to the amount of tags we have. So um, we want to get at least two tags and then hold seven. How good is this hand? Counter surveillance we want late. Uh, it's They have some really mean ice, but we can bravado into it. And I don't think we want to install an Amina. We're not expecting a lot of code gates in the matchup and Mayfly is a bit nonsense. Boomerang Diversion is good, but they're also one of the decks that are running um, too big to fail. So they can recover from financial uh, attacks pretty elegantly. Don't trust the digital bag though? Why? Like the math or what's in it? I never drew from that bag. The reading is kind of, but I appreciate them. Oh, I haven't heard it. Arkham Cards rules, super not. Yeah, it's really good. I wonder if casual startup plus, what is startup plus? Is that dire? It might be classic. It was dire. Yeah. I don't know what classic is. Yo, Frisbee, tell me if you get it. That's some respect, but hey, where's I at? That is so much respect. This is where like I, I radically whiplash between startup and standard and face check HQ and C and after and I get upset uh because they mulliganed did we smash sneak door turn one i think we wanted to res ice and then we smash sneak door turn one do not hit me with an f shard startup plus is all the nsg cards that sounds like a really unattractive format i feel like i'm happy oh that's fine that's so good oh they got two credits back but like yeah whatever now we can run r d Okay, that's really good. Uh, will we gain a credit? Yeah, we're worth it. And then we can draw a last click here. All right. Well, this is the point in our narrative where we've stumbled upon a little secret that I feel like was not meant for our eyes. And now it's on us as the protagonist of this narrative to kind of overcome the challenges presented to us. And by that, I mean, I don't know, I'll pay two credits, I guess. That's weird. What was that about? Probably, probably fine. Is this an asset deck with bad pub? Or are they trying to like hit us with an urban renewal and then go from there? All right, if we don't have installed cards, they can't hurt us. Let's just force them to res stuff. And then eventually once they flood up and they drew into unknown, uh, then we can like hit HQ. Okay, uh, here we have to protect ourselves from punitive, and if we survive this click, we survive every click. Admittedly, we could also just like go ham on centrals, and if we steal another agenda, we win the game. This also makes sense in combination, but I think they could be on punitive, and if they're on punitive, they could do too big to fail, punitive, punitive. If they have like the restraints to not play too big to fail on turn one, which like power to them, I think they shouldn't. Uh, I'm just gonna click for credits. EOTL Reaper, it's really hard to do that, but yeah, maybe. Like there's obviously some additional damage. We're not just going to fall to this. No, hedge fund. Ah, we are alive. Hey, Parallel Andre, what was your verdict on the new ban list? Pretty cool. Um, I think we're going to miss endurance in, <laughs> I think you're going to want endurance back, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm into it. What are you thinking? Is it Borehole Reaper Fork? I always forget that like there's the new 6-2 uh, that like is very playable. I think we could just run into this. Again, if we don't have installed cards, they can't hurt us with Trebuchet or with Bulwark. I don't know what this is, Snare? 
It's a price egg. Oh, that's sick. Oh, we lost our sneak door. We actually didn't want to trash that in like uh, hindsight. I just hit that button, but I don't want to trash that. Uh, I actually, I actually, sorry. You mind? So happy to see dragon boat gone. Yeah, you, you can you can drag it back to the server or your hand, I guess. I don't want to undo the click because then we'll end up taking damage. Yeah, they just yeah, that's fine. Thanks. Sorry about that. Listening to the narrative of the gameplay and those abrupt pauses, you know it's getting real. <laughs> All right, so this is good against diversion. We lost our sneak door, which like was kind of our secret angle to uh attack a single tag is a potentially scary we're gonna have to clear the tag at some point unless um yeah we can clear the tag here hardly any news like we just need to make sure that we have into our uh what's it called if we run centrals here like they could res a mouse unless we end it with a tag i don't think it's disastrous i think we could do it but we should have done it before clearing the tag running last click is a bit sus but they didn't res this last turn Oh, that's sick. It's a trebuchet. So we just allowed them to res a trebuchet, which doesn't do anything. We can still get the axis, which gives us good information. But now we have a bad publicity. Admittedly, they only pay very little on this, but we get a credit and uh, we see that they have a subsidy, which they're pretty far away. And you don't have to see this a lot. Like more often than not, you see too big to fail. But hey, that's good. We can always run through this if we have no board. That's nice. But at some point we need a transition and then we can even just run this to get tags as much as the meat damage might happen. All right, click for credits. Again, they're going to want to get, we have a paperclip in the bin, we have to remember, we have bad pub. Uh, they're gonna to wanna to get the credits up. Let's just keep drawing. Embezzle, what do we know about their hand? We know they have one operation in there. So this is worth doing. This is gonna be four credits plus five, six, so we can embezzle. If it whiffs, we're uh, kind of gutted. But if we get a paperclip down, Trebuchet actually does something. So we can always like run R&D for a credit. And then if it's an agenda, we can boomerang go back. I'm gonna do that. We always can trace through this, but in theory, if they're on three pointers, like again, they're probably on the minimum amount of agendas, which is not the net runner I enjoy. Spin doctor, okay, we'll get a credit. Uh, what are we doing here? I think the diversion is like not entirely off the table. Like we generally want a diversion to make them pop the border control. I think this could be an Afshar, but they didn't res it when they res the border control, so it's more likely to be something big, like a Bulwark or a Trebuchet. Uh, I'll get this down a bit. I think we just click credit, get this down. Here they're likely to click three again. Maybe they have hedge fund into uh, subsidy, but we know the subsidy. We also know they have a spin, which, yeah, they probably do that just to draw more cards. Now we can contest spin relatively easily, considering we have bad publicity. Now they have the hedge fund, so pressuring their economy this turn is pretty relevant. And we know they can't duck it because the price tag reses for zero. Okay. Are they on tag punishment? They're on way more money than I think, and they're on price tag. So I'm going to say it's a pretty safe yes. We want to embezzle after the spin doctor goes through. I think they would probably put these pieces back. So I think we can consider running this. It's not a great use of our click. But if we want to run R&D for our free credit, and free access, we have to get that shuffled because then we can go back. Reaper function goes back and a hedge fund. Man, it would be rough if we ran R&D and hit a snare, and I think there's a chance that that's a possibility. Let's go. Let's see what they can res here again. They're 10 credits now. They can res a bulwark. Wait, how are they in 10 credits? Oh, it's a mouse list. Okay. Uh, yikes. Ooh, lost a boomerang. Man, I haven't played in standard in such a long time. This is a pretty dicey. Uh, so they might have to pop here, but now we have way less credits than them. At least they're off in theory. Let's see if they let us go through. Again, there's a chance this does nothing. Ooh. Magnet snare. We spent all that money for nothing, let alone, of course, we now know they're in snare. I don't think we're surprised about it. Uh, and they're a magnet, which doesn't matter for us as much as a code gate that forces our Mina down, which is kind of rough. Uh, we're in shambles. We're honestly in shambles. Um, I'm not sure how we have to recover from this. We have no way to clear the tag. So we basically just need to get our, our, uh, obelisk double advance hostile. Okay. We have more bad pub. So we have two bad pub. Now, unfortunately the trebuchet does something cause we installed two cards. So that's on us, I guess. 
Oh, this is awful. Our economy's gutted. We definitely needed to stick to the plan to just get the obelisk down. Um, at least when we get to that point, we'll have a game. Now, if we do rogue trading, click the tag, we spend three clicks for four credits. That's technically better than clicking for credit, but we also want to get the tags at some point. So we'll just click four here. This is ugly. Sorry about this. This is a mess. There are 15 and they still have the operation and we know they have a magnet and a snare. Second spin doctor coming down. They must have top decked that, I reckon. What are they doing with Reaper function? There's a subsidy, way more credits than they need. Now we have to worry about hard hitting news. And if that's the case, we just need to get our maw. I don't think we really need to contest this. Okay, that's good. The chance of us finding our obelisk is really good. And once we get our obelisk down, it's actually really hard for us to hot pursuit here. But once we get our obelisk down, we can just hit this twice and hold seven in hand. And maybe they're on retribution. I, I don't know. Now I think, yeah, well, the only thing we have to be worried about is double advance. Another issue here though, is that we have to worry about um, single advance. Whoa. Sometimes you gamble and lose. Yeah, sometimes you do. How many obelisks? What's the suite here? Regulatory as if I'm actually not sure. So this would be a four two if this is regulatory. So this kind of looks like a regulatory. Because I'm I was thinking they're all in five threes, but like it's really hard not to play regulatory. I'm just surprised that they're on this. Like I don't have a good read on their agenda suite at all. Like it's weird to play this. Like if they score a regulatory, they're on three points. So then if they score like a city works and something, like it's kind of hard. Filter draw, we're just trying to get our obelis. Uh we can consider like just bravadoing the remote. It's we definitely need to hit this first, but if we were bravado the remote. What are we running into? If it's a trebuchet, they can trash any of these cards, and that's like kind of bad. Uh, we can install a counter surveillance. Again, there's no surprise they see the rogue trading. And it's really hard for us to hot pursuit. Again, eventually once we get our obelisk, this card's fine. Like we care, we love the tags. So like it's actually a really nice HQ once we're kind of going. Uh, but our sentry breakers, we have one uh, Bugalter and we don't have it. So I think we just draw once. Mutual favor doesn't do anything. Uh, this is a list that doesn't have the Amakua and actually I'd be really happy for Amakua because we can just challenge archives. The Sneaker beta loss was really, really unfortunate. All right, we'll just install the cheapest thing, I guess. So we don't need breakers. The diversion's kind of tricky, especially with too big to fails. So I don't value that. We have to discard one more card. Uh, hot Pursuit's okay. We can always like Boomerang Hot Pursuit. I think that's what we should do next turn, if not even this turn. I think we do Boomerang. Oh, no, no, we do Boomerang maybe Bravado. I just don't know how good a single axis is. And we know there's a snare in there, so I'm not actually stoked about it. We, I think we do Boomerang, excuse me. Um. What's it called? They do jailbreak on R&D to draw three. Jeff, what? <laughs> Never install the CS? Why? So they don't trash it above the law? We have another one. But like, I don't know. They're going to hurt us. Like they have price second snare to some extent. Like I know that we're not excited about this. We have to discard something here. Hold on. Um. Yeah, whatever. That's fine. But just trash if it's relevant. Oh, shit, because we're going to go tag me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we're going to go tag me. They're going to trash this. Yeah, yeah, 100% mistake. Did never install this. Obviously very wrong. I'm hoping it's a regulatory because that's blank. Oh. That's why they're on Reaper. Okay, well. Cool. That's neat. Yeah, that's a card. So what do we want? Docklands or Class X? We'll cycle the Class X. TBTF, uh, we could trash that, but it's a pretty bad draw for them. Argus Crackdown, whoa. Super interesting. We'll shuffle that. Okay, so we can install this for sure if we wanted to, but we just need to hit our, our console. We haven't found our console. We need to find our console. I'm going to cycle these. Admittedly, it's a... Uh, I don't think they're on public trail. No console yet. Your Bravado line was fine. Nothing getting Trebuchet there lost you the game. Yeah, it'd be bad to lose this, but like we can just as easily, um, what's it called? I do think maybe the bravado is better because I'm not sure that we were fishing for axes. Admittedly, this is a bit like we're close to game point abstractly. Oh, bravado server one though. Yeah. Yeah, I think bravado server one might be fine. We can draw one bravado server one. So they have an Argus in hand. They drew into the other card that I forgot what it was. And they have a spin doctor on the table. Okay, so they're not hitting this button, and obviously we have like 3,000 cards in hand. So I think we can just bravado server one. If we lose any of these, like it's okay. We could draw once just to get a filtered card draw. 
Oh man, the Docklands just got shuffled back. This is so good with, uh, with our sneak door, but we lost it. We'll just try and get some money here. So we have two Bravados in 17, or sorry, two uh, Obelises in 17. I wish Jane had told you if your opponent agreed to this. Because I hate hitting this or hitting this not knowing if their opponent's doing something. Because there's a lot of times on approach that you want to do something here. That's fine. They got another bad pub. The runner trashes one program. That one comes back. They gain two credits. So, okay. That's okay. All right. So, we got seven from that. We lost our thing. That be said, we had three bad pubs. So, this comes back relatively cheaply. Or four bad pub. It actually comes back free. Uh, wait. We could have broken this. Probably should have. I forgot we could break it. I thought we had a paperclip. So going through this cost us, we had three bad pub at the time. So going through this cost us six. So we cost three, we'd get one back. And then we'd force them to res more. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe. We just need an obelisk. Uh, oh, that's so bad. All right, we can throw a bunch of these. I'd run archives and kiting and Amina, I think. And just float a single tag? The mean is like not that useful. Uh, mouseless for four or actually with bad pub. Yeah, F it. You're probably right. I think you are right there. And then we can run HQ cheaply to get our tags up. I'm just worried about floating a single tag, but because I think they could end the line day daylight. No, we lose to end the line daylight. I don't think we would do that because that's six damage. Like they're probably on end the line. They're on snare. Maybe they're just trying to hurt us. I do not like this one bit. But ugly draw. Okay, so we need one, two, three. I think we just credit or we draw. Okay, so we discard some stuff here. So we don't need two of these. Hopper said we don't need two of those. Eventually, we're going to need a lot of tags quickly. I don't think we need the Mayfly. We have to do one more. Um, so Begulter is okay. Obviously, it deals with Trebuchet, and it actually deals with it relatively cheaply uh, sooner than later because this is five, six, seven with four bad pub. Um, it actually only costs us, wait, so it cost five, six, seven, you get back two, five. So it only costs us one credit. That's good. Buck needs to go down. Yeah, we'll go down eventually. Uh, favor we don't need. Yeah. Yeah, we don't need mutual. Yeah, we have everything. Rashida, it's good. It's a lot of card draw, a lot of credits for them. Going to get daylight next turn. That's a huge issue though. It's like they can just daylight us. I don't know if they're going to daylight us for spite or they're going to daylight us for um for value. But yeah, you're right. Actually, we probably should just get this on the table because if they daylight us, we just don't have it. Um, but yeah, this is a bit of a nightmare. We're not doing anything. Like we're forcing them to res, which is obviously good. Um, but they have good money and like ice like this even gets resed for uh seven credits. Second ice. At least with Rashida, it's hard to daylight, right? Like they have to discard a bunch of cards. Okay, double price egg. They have an Argus in hand. Let's get our console thick. All right, so we need to get this down. We need to get that down. We can run archives here. I'm just going to click for a credit. I feel like there's some ways we could die. Like they could fast advance Ozief Broad Daylight, and then we could take four damage on a turn. I feel like there's tricky ways that we could potentially die. But next turn's hard too, because we want to be on two tags, but we also want to draw the Opalus. This is one of the weird matchups where like they might have enough end the lines to like end us. Triple advance above the law. Now there is the IZF. Yeah, so we lost our decoder. Okay, so they're on game point. They have 11 credits, which is a lot. We are just way too slow for this. So what do we do? We lost our decoder. So like mouseless is just going to fire, but that's okay. As long as we, uh, we have to keep cards up. We know there's a snare in there. So how do we get out of this? We can go tag me, but at this point it's too late. I think at this point we just have to like hope that they don't have tag punishment. And I don't know if they do. I think they might just be on other tricks. Uh, so we can draw up. Oh, see it's a card. Accessing is the cheapest way for us to get cards. Otherwise, we can do like rogue trading, rogue trading. We're not going to die that turn. Well, we could. If they've been in the line, we just die. I'm just going to do this again. If they've been in the line, we die. But I feel like we're going to die anyways. Yeah, double rogue is the best. If they've been in the line, we die. Um, I don't know if there's a way to do a single damage if we don't run. Like they don't have a Reaper on the table. But if they just have either boom or end of the line, we die. Okay, we lost our whole hand. 
that's actually hard for us to interact with them considering their their game plan so like here they have, <laughs> yeah i was thinking they, they can play uh, uh, argus which is really cool so now if we run any server with ice we have to um what's it called we take two meat damage so the only thing we can do here is draw draw run already and then hope that we rip a two-pointer because here they can score at any five three and we know there's a price x so we need three cards to run this and there's probably a border control here so yeah i i think uh we did not respect hand size so we do draw draw this draws after uh when is this after when the runner makes a successful run if successful what's the order what happens first argus or jailbreak I don't know the order, and obviously that's like a lethal problem. Runner's turn, but I don't know if successful and when successful are the same trigger. Are they the same trigger? I just don't know, because when, I, I know, so on our turn, all our abilities will have priority. They, in fact, they have to go first. It's not even optional. But I just don't know if, if successful and when successful are the same thing. We'll find out together. We died a snare. Yeah, we'll do this for science. If we die, we die. Border control will be really bad here. Uh, we lose two as well. That. <laughs> I was going to say we also lose to in theory if they're on Anemone, but I'd be surprised. Mouse kills us. Uh, yeah, you're right. We should have drawn one for Mouseless. All right. Well, we have no more breakers. We just can't run anything. Uh, we could run this maybe. No, we died too. All right. That's game. We did nothing. Um, we. Oh, we died a Reaper. That's so funny. <laughs> just drawing four was the play that's really funny we thought that that was actually worth pursuing good game oh man yeah it's cool the pressure this puts on for breakers and we have really expensive breakers ideally we install them all for free um oh that's not them thanks for the game uh all for free if we can go tags but we were just too worried to go tag me and I think a really big part of this is that like we just have to go tag me sooner than later because we cannot play safe if we're gonna lose in like three turns like, we just cannot play safe enough uh, for this. And I don't know, actually, if they're on me. Oh, cheers. I don't know if um, that's, uh, that's uh, worth... Like, I don't think we can play around tags. If Like, basically, if the other options, we'd have a non-functional deck. We just have to have a functional deck and then lose to meet damage. The further behind you are, and admittedly, we could have won on single axis. Um, so be it. We didn't call this deck. I think maybe we could piece it together. I totally don't know that this card exists. It's a mean deck. Yeah, it's interesting. Um... Just like having good card draw obviously gets around a fair bit of this. But yeah, again, like decks like this that I don't, I don't know if this is good inherently, like stuff like this. Like I, I do think the whole trebuchet like bulwark stuff suite got so much better without endurance because dealing with this, worrying about the face check into this, like it used to be install endurance and you face check into this. It's not the case anymore. It's like far from it. Uh, let's do that again. Yeah, it's cool though. It's a cool angle. Uh, oh, yeah, it keeps our scroll. Nice. All right, no longer undefeated on JNet. I'll rename it. I'm so sorry. Draw for Boomer. So if we drew once for Boomer, then we installed Boomer. I don't think we had enough clicks. But yeah, Boomerang was our only way to deal with Codegates going forward. Yeah, the Reaper makes a lot more sense now. As like Punitive is like kind of super convoluted. So I was like, maybe they're on a Clearing House, but that's like really hard to do. So I think they're just trying to grind you down. It's like this turn I'll do four damage. Next turn I'll push the remote super on top of Price Egg. Um, you saw trashing the Price Egg was obviously very wrong. Not that we had a robust economy because we were kind of forced out of our tag stuff, but like we never ran it back. But yeah, yeah. Do you think those are those sort of connections you build over time where like you see one card, you expect another? Hey, Chris, I know tag punishment. Yeah, I realized that in hindsight. I was like, it's probably just damage stuff. But like we played the whole game not floating tags, which it cost us everything. Names like this scare me because like it's so hard to tell if this is a person or a bot. And I feel like I played against a lot of people with I don't know. It's it's it's, it's hard. Thule. Okay, well, talk shit about Thule. People have something to prove. <laughs> In theory, infinite hand size is really good against Thule, but Thule's a lot of their shtick actually does care about core damage more than just hand size. So thanks, you too. While they might be on like distributed tracing, uh public trail even into end of line. Uh, that deals with it, but it doesn't deal with ontological. This hand is, at least we can maybe float tags. What do you have against Byroids? Thule and Byroids, for what it's worth, don't go together well. Like, it's usually, what do you have against Harmonics? 
Okay, opening turn. They're going to Ice HQ. It's standard. I forget how that's a thing in starter versus standard. You cannot Ice HQ turn one. Uh, opening hand, otherwise we have Mutual Fever. We don't have playable economy. We do have the one Obelisk, which seemed good. This seems a fair bit better. If we don't have Ice HQ, we can just like go tag me hard. Yeah, good game, Chris. That was a cool deck. Hedge Fund's a good start. Let's see that double ice. Will their ice end the run is the question. Server one, no idea what it is. I don't think Thule has a lot of economy. This could be the deck that we pulled up, which again has the Hank Gekis and some fun stuff in it. I think we just run HQ here to suss out what the ice is. Fire click tax is nice, but it might be too expensive to res for Thule. It's probably okay. The harmonics work relatively well. Here they're not resing. Uh, just love it. Just love it. We're just going to have a slightly longer game. That's cool. Uh, do we check where server one is? Man, a Hendrick on the table is like pretty rude. We don't have economy in this hand. I think we could just send it HQ. They didn't res, so like, what is it? Do they just want to save it for diversion? Sure. Is it an echo? They probably want to res that early. Can we afford a hot pursuit to get crushed? I don't know. Let's try and set up a we. That's good, but expensive. We have no breakers. FC3, they have nine credits though. Maybe. I, I think if they res an FC3, we have to click through all of it. So I think you trade your, your six credits for FC3 on turn one. If this is Rashida, it's a blowout. If it's like a Nico, it's a blowout. But that's more likely a Maryland, and we can't afford it. All right. Well, we'll just get this down. We could have drawn once more. That's fine. You could have taken the core for a shorter game. <laughs> that's true. It's on us, right? There's only one. Is there any more forfeit cards in the format? Oh, we don't know what that is. So it looks like that was a Hendrick or some trap, which is a kind of cool play. RL851 is a lawnmower. Maybe they enjoy gardening. Yeah, maybe they do. All right, so upgrade soup. So we're going to try and win off centrals. That's okay. That's the plan usually anyways. So this HQ run draws a card, gets a credit. We'll see what this is. Again, maybe they have economy issues they don't want to res, but a lot of times you don't want to res, so I don't know what it's necessary for diversion. Then again, we're one boomerang away from it. Stock buyback, of course. Uh, prison. Okay, that's better for next turn. Again, why don't we play Docklands fast first? Because if it is a Fairchild 3, it's a bad spot. Again, I do think they probably would have resed if it was. But next turn, we can check with the Bravado. Let's drop once for an installable. Uh, F it. We can just go R&D. We have clicks and two credits left. Vitruvius. Okay. Border control. What was in Solomir's list? All right, that's the end of the turn. We have to discard two cards here. This has no targets, albeit it's good. Oh, we have six hand size. Sick. Yeah, right. There are bots on JNet? No, not bots, but Smurfs. Uh, Smurfs. And I do think there's a really good reason to be Smurfing uh, because there's a pretty open meta. And if you want to test, like, without kind of revealing your hand, you should test with a name that people can't attach you to. There's a joke about bots playing Thule here, but too classy to go for it right now. I don't know. No BCs in Solomir's list? Okay. That could be the border control. I think I'd rather Bravado HQ than um than Hot Pursuit. On 13 credits, like they're just gonna what, what's the meanest dice they can res? Like next diamond or something? Again. Am I familiar? What are kiting targets? Amina's the best case, but literally anything. Like like credit kiting down an Earthrise Hotel is totally fine. Oh, it's an Eli. Okay. Like, it's totally fine. So if we click through this, I don't think we click through this. I think we get enough money. Uh, the access is like, okay. Maybe they res now, but I think if we click through it, we would for Hot Pursuit. So we're just going to let that fire and we can run R&D for our card and our credit. On sell. Okay. Zaya. Oh, technically we should do the other version. Uh, other order. Like, we would love to like get this down. I would love to not pay no credits for this. Unfortunately, we we discarded that. But um, yeah, I pay no money for that is fine. All right, so it seems like a border control. It's risky playing this and going down to three. Maybe they double ice HQ, and that's kind of the nightmare scenario. But next turn, we can install rogue trading. The problem is like you want to hit rogue trading twice in a turn. So they drew past the on sell. Okay, so that could be the on sell. Is it bloop? Uh, it can't be bloop. Well, it could be bloop. They just couldn't res bloop, right? Oh, on HQ. I see what you mean. Hey, Steven. They're Boston JNet. His name is Adam. He's a sweet running boy. How's it going? We don't know what that is. I don't want to run the Hendrix server. We're trying to win off centrals anyways. How have you been liking the rotation, Steven? I don't know if you've been playing recently. 
There's a Fairchild 3. Okay. Obelisk will get filter draw. Uh, Boomerang is fine enough. Get a credit. Now we just want to get tags. So we can do this and get tags. That increases our hand size. And we just throw out a paperclip here. Now they can trash this, but it might conflict if they're trying to score out an agenda. And I think you have to trash this. It's way too much money, let alone we value the tags pretty heavily. And again, if we like flush the top of the deck with like counter surveillance, we don't have to play around it ontological. If we can just ensure they don't draw into them. They have a Fairchild 3 in hand and an on cell. On cell could be on HQ. If they spend six to resin on cell, like sick. Yeah, they trashed it. You have to do that. I haven't played much. Has Shaper been dunked on as hard as it seems? I don't think so. Well, yes, but I, I think Shaper's probably playable. That seems like an FC3. Just trying to make this joke, but about Sanjay and Byard's better whiffed. No, 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 not at all. So. Yeah, that makes more sense. I thought a Fairchild 1 on server 1 is a bit rich for how much money they have. But this could be an agenda in waiting. Maybe it's a Jupe's Dead too. All right, so we think it's a Fairchild 3. We think this is an on sell. I think if it's on sell, we can just kind of send it and then we can pay our way through the Eli, which would be 4 plus 3, which is 7. Yeah, that's doable. And if they resin on sell here, they're financially ruined. Again, making Thule res their stuff is so important because Thule inherently is not very credit rich. This sees two cards, gets us a lot of credits. There's the on sell. So we lose to ganked, I guess. Um, yeah, I guess we lose to ganked. We'll click through this. So we end up probably taking a core damage here. That's a downside. We've already invested. Our access is incredibly profitable, so we're going to go for it. We'll maybe take one core damage here, but they can't res R&D for a minute. Drafter, Hyperloop. Okay, wow. Whoa, that's good for them. We'll take the core damage. We lost a diversion. Feels bad. So Obelisk will draw. So we have another Dawkins. We don't want that. Uh, gain two credits. Cool. So we take one core damage. Our hand size is seven, but core damage matters for ontological. Now, if they do anything that's not credit positive, we have R&D open. Adam's so cool. Part of why I really like Parallel Roland is the directives. I still have to pick up my like officially, well, you know, the ones from uh, the Game Center reprinted ones. Oh, it's a Hyperloop. I'm so glad they scored that out, not us. Uh, this looks like a, you know, the, the sort of list that a lot of people say would be better in sports metal, but I had a really good fine time with Adam with directives and I'm so much more excited now that there's uh the new, um, uh, what's it called? Handcuffs. Okay. I think we just run R&D first click. They can't res what seems to be a fair job. We can consider contesting server one. Um, we generally want to run third click if that's the case. Um, so that we can play around Hendrick. That's a food. I think we will try and avoid that. So we'll take the counter surveillance for sure. We definitely need to figure out how to just get more tags. So I think boomeranging the on sell and then uh, hot pursuing next turn is pretty good. Uh, they can't really afford the rogue trading. Unfortunately, if we put it down, this click is relatively bad. Do we want to mayfly through this? Boomerang is just about as good. Let's go. Let's go back. <laughs> we went back. <laughs> Overinstall the class egg. Yeah, actually, we probably should have there. I don't think we needed four credits. We could have overinstalled that. 100%. Yeah. Don't you just trash the, to throw the class act? Don't use the trash to throw the class act. Sorry, what do you mean, JDF? How's it going, by the way? Uh, yeah, we definitely should have installed a new class act, I reckon. But there's not much more we're drawing for. You can let the trash fire and kill off TC8. On on sell? It's their choice. So we can't trash the class act to it, if that's what that is. Right? Like this is their trash one stall runner card, because it's their card, they make the decision about it. Yeah, yeah, it's not our choice. If it was like a fair trial three, yeah, hundred percent. How the f they got sixteen credits? Oh, I hate stock buyback. Oh, it's like the worst. It's like supercharged uninteractive economy that punishes you for interacting that like suddenly they go from one to 16. It's economy cards like this that like have no inherent interaction. Like, you know how the whole game we were trying to keep their economy down? Doesn't matter. Here's 15 free credits. Ah, man. I'm getting really salty about certain things and everyone. It's fine. Uh, so we want to get more tags this turn. That's for sure. They can have an agenda in here. Uh, maybe it's on top of a jupe stud. Again, we could have trashed the server that net last turn. I think we should have actually. I think we forgot that that was a possibility. So I think we can just do boomerang. We can see two cards in HQ. At least hey, two of the nightmare archives are out. But we want, want to lock the top of R&D every turn. So we need to find our Amina. Uh, luckily, this draws two cards. So I think we're going to do it. 
Thule isn't very credit rich. Us five minutes. In. I know, but this is not Thule. This is just like this card that's like the worst in like Jinteki prison. Or not prison, but like, you know, attrition decks and then in Thule. Jupe is a regent. Oh, no, but Trank. Oh, huge. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. So it can't be. So it's probably a Hendrick, right? Or even a Managarm. Yeah, yeah, good call. Hey, Audacity. Okay, so it is just a sports medal. We steal an ontological. At this point, we can actually start taking some core damage. It makes the ontological 3 2, so I think we can just take a core damage here. Actually, if we lose the counter surveillance, it's ugly. Yeah, we can afford it. That's a whole stack of triggers. Uh, we want to not draw the boomerang. So we'll do Obelisk first. Sneak door is nice. Uh, Amina is important because there's a Fairchild 3. Uh, Mainly sneak door is not bad. Gain two credits. Shuffle that back. Okay. Again, knocked down. We're going to get up again. <laughs> Very true. Very tub thumping of you. All right, four tags. Can we just see four cards off of R&D? Yeah, we just need one ontological to win. So we can just smash the Amina. I think in terms of, sorry, it's going to get very bright here for a second. Uh, that's no more credit kiting. So we're going to pay uh, market price for an Amina. They're drawing again. We could have drawn into a sneak door, which actually is probably better than the second counter surveillance. Oh, we got to figure out what that is. Uh, Hendrick can go on a remote, right? Or on a central. I don't think we care. I think we take the Hendrick. I don't think we care. Worst case, Giordano. Oh, Giordano's likely it. And this deck does not have pinhole. Very likely Giordano. We want to install this before we lose it. They have no further action. So I think it's a Giordano. Oh, they didn't res. Hyperloop. Okay. It's a Hendrick. Uh, F it. We can take the core, right? So you either lose two clicks. It's funny that this one's cheaper <laughs> and the ability and the ability we didn't take the core damage. I'm just going to be spiteful. I'm just going to lose all remaining clicks. Because what are we doing with our last click? It's not that good. I don't think we trash him. Counter surveillance doesn't ax it. So like we actually don't care. Obelisk gets a card. We actually draw two cards because mind you, we access the upgrade. Uh, so mutual favor doesn't, it gets our begalter, which is like kind of whatever now. Uh, diversion's kind of whatever as well. How bad is diversion? I think mutual favor is we're less likely to need and we'll gain two credits. Okay, Vortex. I missed the beginning of the stream. Is this just a straight up counter surveillance? Eye? Yeah, so the idea is that like with less, you know, Drago decks, so inherently, hopefully less market forces and um, self growth program, it seems like it's an overall win for tag me Zaya. So this is not a new deck. Uh, this is actually playing none of the new Parhelion cards, which is actually worth addressing, but this is just Austin Mills' deck, which is again, very similar to, uh, of course, uh, Eric Kielbach's deck and also Izzy's deck that was played at World. Seamless. Is that ontological? Nice, three, two, that's great. So there's only one more ontological. So the, the cost of stealing, uh, you know, uh, it gets worse and worse. Now this is where we might need a boomerang or a begalter. So how do we set this up? Oh, we know they're on border control. We know they're on border control. If that's a border control, that's the worst case scenario by a mile. What party alien cards would you consider putting in? I would have to look. I honestly have no idea. Uh, I don't think much. Maybe you could play awake, but I, I would have to review the, the all the party healing cards. If that's a border control. That's really, really bad. Okay. Um, did we just get infinite economy? Do we? I think we maybe twice picked the worst card off class act. If only could slipstream around that border control. Hold on. Wait, wait. You're right. <laughs> you're right. You're right. You're right. Okay, let's go. Let's just do this. Let's just hit this. And then we'll just cycle these. Do we have slipstream in this deck? Uh, I don't think we know enough to embezzle as good as it is. Wait, is this the one with slipstream in it? I think Austin was a slipstream specialist. So slipstream. Whenever you pass a res piece of ice, you may trash this resource. If you do, choose one piece of ice protecting a central server in the same position. Okay, so we're going to try and slipstream it. We will kick flip. Again, we only need one good axis. We have a sneak door somewhere shuffled up because of the boomerang. We can go HQ. Get some good value there. Uh, actually, no, we have to click through the on sell. So we do begalter go HQ. That's five credits. We're on seven. 
This is, they drew later in the turn. Oh, Tranquility drew though, so that's fine. Another upgrade, okay, that gets scary and scary. How many upgrade, wait, how many? It looks like one, but it's two, right? That's really hard to tell. Are there two upgrades on there? That's messed up. Okay, second upgrade's also a problem. Can we win by just running the remote server? Maybe. Gotcha. All right. Uh, I think if there's an agenda, it's in server one. So I think we should just go find it. All right. Let's just go get some value. So this is three, four, five, six. Wait, do we have enough money to do this? I think we might have needed to hit this first. So this is three, four, five, six. So it's four. Yeah, we're like credit perfect. I did not enough math, obviously. Excuse me. It looks like we did that perfectly, though. That's kind of what matters. Seamless audacity, of course. All right, so we'll do paperclip first. No, we'll do overlays. The paperclip there is kind of a joke. It doesn't do anything. Uh, okay. Zaya. Okay, 11 credits. Oops, core damage. Yeah, tell me about it. I think we can run server one here pretty safely. They have an audacity, so they're like two good scores away and a seamless. So I think we have good reason to check server one. Now we're pretty sure there's a border control on that. So we're just going to run it twice. We might get a read on what the defensive upgrade is. I think it likely is a Hendrick. And at this point we can take more core damage, like with only ontologicals, one more ontological on the list. I don't think it matters that much. Okay, drafter, that's relatively expensive. We do have a card that we double click for six. So we think it's a border control. We break that for two. We can come back. Yeah, it's a border control. That's fine. And if they border control, that means we're definitely going back. We might take two core damage, but like, hey, we have 10 hand size. Yeah, okay, now we're definitely going back. What's this? Nice, we win. Hey, good game. Yeah, that remote server seemed a bit safer. Uh, but again, unfortunately, with massive hand size, hey, thanks, you too. For massive hand size, it's more like only the core damage that matters is the ontological, barring they might have some star tricks. This has to be Hendrick, right? Yeah, it's a Hendrick. Uh, but yeah, we can just kind of get there with enough pressure accesses and not worry about the, the core damage. Hey, catch you around, eh? I was playing Cerebral Overwriter and got my friend down to one card, which is funny. You don't see a lot of Overwriter. And again, I guess Thule and Startup can't do it. Uh, but uh, yeah, more often they, they don't play big traps because a lot of times you just don't run the remote server when it's like a hell server, when it's like three upgrades in the remote. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I do think with Thule, again, like the one econ card they had was that big old thing, uh, the big old buyback, which I'm not great. How many turns was that game? That's a good question. I don't know if the stats will say. Hypoxias would have been nasty. <laughs> yeah, honestly, Hypoxias would have been funny. Uh, it was 10 turns, so actually relatively fast. Never seen the Canadian A typed. Oh, I type it all the time. It's so good. Hey, eh? How's it going, eh? It's a really nice way because it makes every like kind of sentence a question and it makes it more friendly and it feels like, you know, you're participating. You're not just saying a fact you're like, hey, you know, you know how it is, how it is. There's another way of that. Yeah, the Hangeki one is different. It's not it's not your deck yet. My favorite part of playing counter surveillance is it's still being in my hand when I win on incidental accesses. But Izzy, that means you're pressuring them. So you're playing good criminal. But yeah, hey, we, we did not counter surveillance once. <laughs> Bless you. All right, it's getting late. I think that's going to be it for uh for today we have some video content coming up again i did a bunch of standard filming we're gonna get back to startup for sure <laughs> bless you uh so we have the hoshiko deck which is kind of boring and a failure and i'm going to show you what those decks or those games look like because some of them are pretty interesting but it's more so to see like oh just jamming all this like free breaking stuff together doesn't make a lot of sense and then f shortly following i don't know if it's going to be a week later or just days later uh we're going to try and get up that uh the alice one which I actually think it's like a reasonably good deck it's actually really really fun i had a lot of fun playing the alice deck uh you gotta bless you in chat maddie no thank you she says um otherwise i want to do a video about a five threes we'll see how i feel about it i was pretty fired up about it today and i know we can talk about it but we'll have some video content coming up real soon being canadian gives you bonuses for community engagement eh? hey you see you're engaging eh? how many hours of jnet are you averaging a week now it depends um it depends on what we're capturing and what we're doing so today was actually really lucky 
Uh, yesterday I filmed a whole bunch of Hoshiko and I think I filmed for about three hours uh, and got, you know, enough footage. Today was a bit better, maybe three and a half hours. Uh, today was a bit better. It was only like two hours of footage. And I think every game we captured was like very, very much worth doing. Poor Padma and Standard. I think Padma's still fine. Hey, made it through a game with that corp ID without making any comments. Go me. <laughs> Have a great weekend. Thank you, Jessica. Uh, so it really depends. Sometimes they're bad. Like some days I just record and I have nothing to show for it. And I think that's the worst feeling. And then it like, you know, makes Netrunner feel more like a job, um, which isn't great as much as to some extent. Obviously, the monetization of this channel and huge shout out to our patrons does kind of make that the reality. Oh, you're playing less now because of you introducing RoboQuest in my life. Oh, yo, I'm glad you liked it. RoboQuest is really good. I'm so excited every time they update that. So, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm playing a fair bit more, um, but I'm spending a lot of time video editing um, and that's been nice. What makes it good to show? Oh, I, like a game? What makes a good game? So generally the good games that we show in the videos and also the, the good losses, the good wins, I don't think a win necessarily makes it a good game to show, but generally if it's a win, uh, you're often showing up the highlights of your deck. You're making good decisions. You don't get blown out. You don't die to random snare. All that sort of stuff makes the video more or less interesting. So I think if we have a game where we're like, we're making active decisions, it's close. There's some like clutch. Oh, we have to do this or this. We're down to credits. That obviously makes it exciting. I think better television, but then like certain games where say like, for instance, we're going to unfortunately demonize Shinteki P again. If I'm playing against P and I have a nuanced deck about a lot of installation and doing like weird interactions. And then, you know, it's not that, uh, then that's not probably a good game and you don't learn that much about this new deck we're trying to show off um i think all that's really important if we can just get absolutely crushed if we access like 14 cards and see no agendas on central servers that's sometimes a bad game but not necessarily uh but it comes to that also unfortunately like if our opponent makes uh like if our opponent absolutely crushes us that's a problem if our opponent like that's not probably good if our opponent's like really new to the game and like clearly we're not showing up the deck so much as like our opponent is trying to figure out how to play netrunner like it's great that people are playing out Netrunner, but it's probably it's not going to be a good, you know, sh way to show the deck off. Uh, but yeah, it's a mix of all that. So it's it's difficult. It's interesting. Sometimes I just get salty. <laughs> and I'm like, I can't show that. That's embarrassing. Thanks for the stream. Looking for the channel GNK. Yes, I have to get down the books. I will very soon. I have a regular Arkham group now. Thanks for this channel. Yo, that's sick. What are you playing? Count on content runner. It's a different game. It kind of is. But we love watching you hit a random snare. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I know. It's been a while. We've been respecting. And there was a comment about this. Um, but the amount of energy I spend, like, not dying to stare when playing startup uh, is, like, way too much. It's way too much. Because I don't want to, like, spend 20 minutes of a gameplay and then, like, in the 25th minute just run R&D and die to a snare in, like, Reality Plus. So I, unfortunately, am over, uh, you know, protecting myself to that. Yeah, I don't know. I'm going to try and bounce between standard and startup for what it's worth. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for the stream. Appreciate your effort. Awesome stuff. Pat yourself on the back. Oh, thank you. Thanks. That's very kind. I found one guy who's an Arkham maniac who builds decks for everyone. The rest of us just show up. Yo, that's all, like kind of as good as you can ask. Eventually, if you want to get to deck building, you can probably. And I think they'd probably be happy, but that's amazing. Thanks for the stream. Keen to see what the meta will become unless it's all too late. There's almost no way it will be. Great stream tonight. Thanks you. Hey, cheers. That's going to be all. Uh, enjoy yourself. We'll have a video out hopefully on Monday, uh, maybe a Tuesday, and we'll be back on Thursday. Take care of yourself. Thanks for your good discussion for sure. Hey, cheers. Enjoy the new meta.